on the holes in my shoes. I stick my tongue in the holes in my teeth. I stick expletives in the holes in my thought process when I speak. My friends stick to their guns. They got a bunch in the woods of Vermont till the end time come. But Saturn says he's gonna learn to live as if the world. do my best to drink coffee in the morning and live as if I didn't feel lonely and hopeless and helpless to save myself for the world where I live and tonight when I dream it will be that the junkies spent all the drug money on community gardens and collective housing and the fuck kids who moved in the Potholes collecting garbage To prove we don't need governance To do these things And I'll wake up Burning Times Square as we sing Throw your hands in the air property is robbery
That someday I'll tell you without lying I was born to quit smoking I was born to quit dying On that day Not doing the heroin Will be easy as pissing On that day I'll stop talking so much shit About the government Cause urine speaks louder than words On a politician Or on a prison warden Urine speaks louder than words to do is done oh what's up everybody uh, let me reload some stuff here though cursor there we go yeah i'll take that that works buddhist i was just thinking about you last night my man how you doing how you doing my man um what's up aga yeah, scroll back, Karina, as always. Uh, give us hope for a future in which we don't die. Oh, I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> that's not a thing I can do. So give me a name. Um, oh, man. I, I, yeah, I want to pop this headline. I didn't look at it. The House Ethics Committee has opened an investigation into claims that North Carolina Representative Madison Cawthorn, our boy, uh, committed insider trading and engaged in sexual relationship with a male staff member in violation of house ethics rules. <clears throat> oh, he also improperly promoted a cryptocurrency in which he may have had an undisclosed financial inst uh, interest uh, and engaged in an improper relationship with an individual employed on his congressional staff. <laughs> if he wasn't such a fucking turncoat trader, self-hating queer... I, you know, he could be fun to have on team. That's all I'm saying. What's my beef with Dylan Burns? A whole bunch of shit, Wilhelm, actually. I'm not getting into it. Um, what's up, Deirdre? Uh, Karina. Uh, I've been very busy, but it's been mostly positive stuff going on. Uh, my back was a mess this last week, Buddhist. Uh, really fucked up my workouts. But my fucking uh, massage guy, um, I don't know if you've been around, Buddhist, but I've got a massage guy. Um, like, we straight up, he just hooks me up. Um, two and a half, three hour massages. Either way, he straight up said, he was like, dude, just come in the middle of the week. He said, like, I'll, I'll just take care of it. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. He's like, dude, I'll just come, just come in the middle of the week. He's like, if some shit like spazzes out on you, he's like, you know, I want you to like, I want to take care of it before it becomes a thing. So, you know, I have my marching orders as far as that goes. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, you know, fucked up my workouts last week, basically. Um, 
What's your beef with the Philistine King? <laughs> hey, cat. Um, am I able to do my workouts now? I did. Uh, I did one core workout. My back is kind of tight, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I'll do some. Um, I'm focusing on arms. I'm gonna do some um, weights again tonight. Maybe some fucking legs. I don't know. I can. I can work out now. It's still. I'm still not back to where I need to be, uh, Deirdre. That's that's long and short of it. But I'm glad you're okay, Buddhist. Um, let's see. So, uh, I'm losing my fucking mind about not heading to the gym. Uh, well, I mean, you know, Buddhist, that's just my life. That's just my life, man. That's just my life. Oh, fucking A. Ah. Uh, oh, there. Um... So, <sighs> Glazy Cat was in a car wreck and is under doctor's orders to wait a couple of weeks before he uh, before he continues his workouts. Oh, I think this. Hang on. That's better. Um, all right. Um, so should we, um, <laughs> should we talk about the, uh, uh, the Southern Baptist Convention actively covering up uh, the rape of over 700 fucking children and victims um, and the protection of over 380 predators within their organization, all contained within a secret church database. Yes. Fucking Southern Baptist Convention uh, doing... Um, <clears throat> doing the same thing to Catholics, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, the fucking, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it's not, uh, dude, it's here. I, I can get you the document itself. Here, here's the, here's the link to the document itself. If you, if you want a primer on it, here's, here's a Washington Post article. Um, but at the end of the day, like the, the document itself is like what you should be looking at. Here's the, um, independent investigation, uh, Southern Baptist convention, executive committee's response to sexual abuse allegations and the audit of the procedures and actions of the credentials committee. Um, I do believe 144. No, 144 was the French document. I'm sorry. Um, because the weekend... <laughs> fucking... Um, oh, God. So, I covered the French IC... Oh, what's the document called? Forgive me. Um, get out of my way, all my shit. Where's my source documents? The um, CIASE, that's what it is. The CIASE is the final report by the French Independent Commission on Sexual Abuse in the Catholic Church. So, the Southern Baptist Convention basically got fucking raked over the coals. And the long and short of it is, is that, you know, it, we know there's sexual abuse going on there. They weren't talking about it. They had to have a fucking independent commission into it. And at the end of the day, what, uh, what we find out is that they've got, you know, if we know about 700, it's probably a thousand, right? We've got tr uh, quadruple digits um, and they've been protecting hundreds of predators within their church. Um, and they've known about it. They've known about it. Um, but so I was sort of on this, you know, investigation and the, um, there's this French independent commission that on the sexual abuse just in the Catholic Church, it's called the CIASE, um, they studied sexual violence in the Catholic Church in, just in France from 1950 to 2020. What's up, Cricks? Um, 
on page 144 of that document or 151, I forget what it was. Um, what we find out is, uh, let's see, hold on. Cause I know what I, t what I want to look for. Um, what we find out is that there is over 330,000 victims in seven, uh, in those 70 years. 330,000. 216,000 by priests alone. If you include all Catholic staff, 330,000 sexual abuse victims in 70 years. That's approximately 12 a day, just so you know. I did the math on it when I first looked at the, the commission report. I was like, how many fucking is this? Like, what's the math on this? 12 a day. Just in France. Just in France. We're talking, un like, uh, yeah, 12 sexual abuse, mostly minors. Mostly minors. Um, 12 sexual abuse victims per day for 70 years in France. One of the things the commission found was that while the abuse rate did slow down um, coming into the 90s, the uh, rate of slowdown stopped the rate of decrease of sexual abuse actually stopped within the catholic church and so it isn't what was trending downward hit a valley and just plateaued out it's not decreasing anymore so <clears throat> yes the, the the french independent french commission managed to identify approximately 330,000 victims over 70 years just by the catholic church alone and the catholic church is not slowing down the abuse at this point uh in the investigation right we've got fucking the southern baptists we've got the uh fucking with their database of abuse victims we've got the jehovah's witnesses with their files in australia that are being fined something like ten thousand dollars a day for not turning over the uh the predators list even though they have one the mormons have been up to shit fuckery for ages we know what the fuck those little kid fuckers and polygamists are up to right so yeah yeah, it's it's it was an interesting. I watched a lot of documentaries over the weekend. I looked at a lot of fucked up documents over the weekend, um, and I also finished the master list um, for anybody who needs it. And yeah, boom! Don't don't send any. How many psychological studies are there correlating religion to pedophilia? I you know I'm gonna have to look into it. Um, <laughs> fair enough, Dig. Um, so. Where was I? Uh, either way. Um, uh, let's see. Don't see. Yeah. Don't see any of these places. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm numb to you. Um, <sighs> basically, the long and short of it is, is you fucking, as near as I can tell, there isn't a major world religion that doesn't have a massive kid fucking problem. The long and short of it. Um, I want to investigate Hinduism independently because I think Hindus, Hinduism's probably got the same problems, but I haven't done any independent looks at it. Orthodox Judaism has the exact same problems, if not even worse. Um, they're just a minor subset, right? There's like 15 million Jews in the world at most at any given point, and Orthodoxy represents a subset of a subset. Um, brought to you by Notre Dame Minister. Yep. Um, Orthodoxy for Judaism represents a subset of a subset, but I mean, yeah, like between the Jehovah's Witnesses who we know have been fucking kids, the Southern Baptists who we know have been fucking kids, the Catholics who fucking made a tradition out of fucking kids. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. So yeah, 330,000 in 70 years. And if anybody wants the French document, I can I can hook you up with that. It's just on my desk. It's in my source documents folder. Um, the uh, master list is done. The master list is a thread found under gross old pedos under shared content. Um, it is a disturbingly long scroll. Uh, it is nothing but conservatives, Republicans, who have been caught diddling kids. Um, uh, Karina, they're not. Uh, one, Christianity isn't a white religion. 
though adopted primarily by whites, it is born of the Middle East. It is born of a brown man. It is born of fucking Abraham, uh, Abrahamic ideology. So, like, at the end of the day, you know, yeah. It's Semitic. Oh, there's cat. Fucking ain't white. It's Christianity is of Semitic origins. Yep. It's not white. Um, and you can look at um, Islam for examples of that beyond. Um, also, the Buddhist monks have had problems with this as well over the years. <clears throat> there's been instances of it within Buddhist monasteries. There's been instances of it within... This is, again... Um, but if anybody needs a list of, like, if you ever get into it with a conservative who's um, fucking... Um, if you ever get into it with a, a conservative who starts whinging about, yes, down with Posadabot, I'm okay with that. Um, who's whinging about groomers and shit like that. The master list is your uh, favorite tool. Um, it is pages and 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 pages. And pages. Um, I mean... This is just from the last handful of years. This is just from the last handful of years. Like I, I had to put a, a fucking time limit on it as well. Because if I started going back to like the 70s and 80s, the list probably would have been double. So that's that's just from like the 2000s, like the 2010s and shit like that. Um, and they're all somebody. They're all somebody. They're all like, you know, former Republican Speaker of the House, fucking Republican Speaker of the House in Puerto Rico, Republican mayor, fill up, you know, Republican campaign consultant, Republican pastor, Republican legislator, Republican fundraiser, Republican of the year, Republican state senator, Republican congressman, Republican activist. It's a giant fucking list of Republican slash conservative kitty diddlers. It's just one after another, after another, after another, after another. It's just pages of them. Um, hundreds. Breaking news. Nancy Pelosi, leader of a pack of trans furry illegal alien biker gang members, hijacked the emergency ship in a baby formula and was last he seen headed towards the border. What's up, Fire? Um... Yeah, it, it's just, it, it, it's a hell of a fucking list. Baptist megachurch pastor. Oh, look at you. Megachurch pastor again. Different one, um, by the way. Um, GOP state representative, sheriff, blah, 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 blah. So many. So much child pornography. So much child pornography. I mean, so much child pornography. It, it is it is astounding how many fucking child pornography charges have been handed out to the GOP. It is kind of ridiculous. And you can't fucking claim, like, like, oh, it's the Democrats coming after them, because a lot of them are in their own states. Like, you know, uh, the mayor of former mayor of Ashland, Kentucky, was nailed for porno child pornography charges. Wasn't the fucking feds that hit him? It was his own fucking state, right? Like it's it's, you know, Kentucky. You know that that liberal fucking leftist bastion that is Kentucky, right? Like it, it's just it is absolutely insane. Republican mayor of uh, uh, Kitchikan, uh, Alaska, Jack Shea, pled guilty in a plea deal, reducing his ninety-one charges of child pornography down. Like I mean, it's like that. Hey, Deirdre, thank you for the um thank you for the coffee thing. Thank you for the sub or the donation. Either way. No, it's a sub. Thank you, Deirdre. Uh or something like that. Uh thank you kindly, Deirdre. Yeah, it's so if any like I said, if anybody needs it, it's under the gross old pedos section. Um, oh, that is bright dig, Jesus. Um 
would you say it's an evolutionary trait or they're just like, I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. I, I, I legitimately don't know. I, I was expecting some sort of pattern to emerge or some sort of insight to happen, having gone through this list, like ad nauseum. I, 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 I was expecting something, right? Um, yeah, nah. Other than social conservatism leads one to some very dark places. Because I, 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 at certain points, I'm like, okay, so let's look for democratic operatives, right? Who are charged with, like, violations of children, right? The list is stunningly short. It's stunningly short. I mean, like, if I type, okay. Oh, this isn't even, why is this different than this? That's weird. Oh, I, <laughs> Ideology. Um, I'm in team ideology on this one. You know that sex ed reduces rates of abuse and more education. And taking blah, 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 blah. Uh, they also tend to be less religious. School teacher included on either of those lists. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a couple. There's a couple. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, give me a sec. Uh, we got camps. Um... Yep. Yep. Grade school. Daycare. The daycare one was a um, former uh, city councilman. Um, he got probation. He ran a daycare center and uh, was uh, possessed child pornography. They gave him probation for that, by the way. Um, yeah. No, there's, yeah. 100%. Uh, that's why conservatives are always calling people who don't like pedos because they know what they are and how evil it is. Yeah, like, it is it is kind of absurd going through that list. Like, it's just... Yeah. Former mayor um, pled guilty to child porn even though he created it himself by filming one of his grade school students. Yeah. So much child pornography. So much child pornography. It is it is disturbing how many of these fuckers get tagged for child pornography. I honestly. Either way, like I said, if you need the list, it's there. It's a resource. Avail yourself of it. God knows you fucking you can drown out any of these idiots with it. Oh. What's up, Aspen? What is that gone? Aspen's watching without video. Interesting. Tells us that now. Somebody's watching without video. Hi, Aspen. Um, oh, yes. Candace Taylor. Uh, Candace Taylor, the uh, Georgia GOP um, candidate, uh, gu gubernatorial candidate. Um, you added the tag manually. Interesting. Um, she's the one who has the slogan, Jesus Guns Babies. Those of you who don't know, there's a gubernatorial candidate in te uh, in Georgia um, that has the slogan "Jesus Guns Babies," right? Um, so she got up in front of a fucking podium with a microphone and said to an audience of people. We're going to do a political rally and we're going to honor Jesus. They can't tell us separate. They're not going to tell us separation of church and state. We are the church. We run this state. The church runs the state of Georgia. 
That's gubernatorial candidate Candace Taylor from the state of Georgia stating unequivocally that she does not recognize separation of church and state and that the church runs, quote, runs the state of Georgia. Oh, yeah. Ex- well, Exel, it's been a long time coming, but yeah. Um, it's been a long time coming, Axel. It's 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 definitely taken on a, an accelerated new tone uh, the last few years, but it, this 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 started warming up around Reagan's administration. Um, fucking, so, yeah, I I. I Dude, they're like full on mask off theocrats at this point. <laughs> will she recognize freedom of religion for Satanists? No, she will not be. Um, uh, hmm. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, fuck. We're going full on theocracy. We're going full on theocracy. Um, (laughs) by the way. Top Tory faces drink spiking claim as victim woke up to find nipples being licked. <laughs> they're, they're like, does anybody know who the fuck this is? Caleb, who was the nipple licker? This is sort of shit like the UK fucking uh, rags don't actually name these assholes, but everybody always seems to know who they are. <laughs> Aspen, who hasn't woken up to that? Um, so, because they don't do that sort of thing, Libra. They're fucking, yeah. Um, thank God I finished <laughs> making burger patties in time for this one. Ah, uh, fuck knows. Give me a minute. All right, Caleb, thank you. <laughs> which, which one of your Tories is spiking people's drinks and licking their, uh, licking their nipples when they're passed out? Ah. Uh. The name Kai is racist? Cool. Thanks. I'm just going to claim it's my birth name at that point. (laughs) Fuck them. That's hilarious. Well, given Kai is derived from Indo-European Kylo. No, uh, and to answer the question, Maleficam, no, I did not. Cool. Twitter should be purged. Twitter should be purged from this earth. Yeah, I, I, I firmly think that Twitter should just be eliminated. Yeah, like burn to the ground. Let's let's not even repurpose the servers. Let's just take the hit on the environment and burn those servers. Whatever fucking server farm that Twitter is like existing existing on, we need to like literally purge it from this planet. Yeah, with fire. Exactly, Carpe. Yeah, apparently folks are mad that white trans people take up non-white trans names when they transition. All right. That matter is irretrievably contaminated. I 100% agree. Um, Yeah. What's up, Squiddy? Uh, Apparently my name is racist. So that's cool. Uh, what's up, Crimson? 
Just found out my name is racist. That's that's great. Um, so. <laughs> Unsure. There's been two Tory rape cases this week. Everything's overlapping. Um, so this is a great photo. <clears throat> so. By the distant Asian powers in me, I pronounce Kai unracist. Um, so here we go. This is a rather famous Ukrainian journalist, Yuri uh, Burusov. Um, Yuri states that this photo was taken when he and Ukrainian soldiers while on reconnaissance stumbled across a Russian BMP-1 or BMP-1 and they stole it from uh, from the Russian 35th separate guards uh, 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 motor rifle brigade a hundred meters from enemy positions they stole it from a captain um, yeah, yeah, this Ukrainian journalist was embedded with some Ukrainian soldiers and they fucking while out on a recon, come across a accessible Russian BMP one and they fucking straight GTA it. Let, let's fucking take it. They, they hopped in it, started it and drove it the fuck off <laughs> like right just away from the fucking Russian soldiers. <laughs> Straight up fucking GTA to goddamn Russian <laughs> Russian military vehicle. <laughs> oh, respect. Respect. I don't care what what side. I don't care how that happens. That's a hilarious story. Yeah, thanks for the tank. Later, suckers. Fuck you. That's fucking hilarious. Um Yeah, Excel, for real, right? There's um there's some some um like there's some YouTube chick who fucking has a bunch of videos up actually explaining in like Ukrainian um how to how to use like how to start various equipment and where the controls are like there's even instruction videos on YouTube apparently for like how to hijack Russian gear. I think I saw her on TikTok. Yeah, I, she made the rounds. I've seen her. Yeah. Like there's just literally instruction uh, instruction videos by some hot chick on how to fucking steal Russian armored <laughs> armored mill gear. It's brilliant. Um, fucking yeah, Russia is too broke to put trackers in their vehicles. <laughs> and even if they did have them, they wouldn't be able to use them because of reasons. That's fucking. They took down the comms network. Where to find serial number? Russian tank. <laughs> Oh. oh, what else was there? What else was there? I mean, we've got, you know, we'll get into popos, but. <clears throat> oh, that, that one bothers me. The fucking, fucking, this is, the church runs the state of Georgia. Oh, I'm fucking. Now I'm wondering how much the Abrams controls are over-exaggerated because you're supposed to require super extra special training to drive an Abrams and its controls are classified. How much more different could it be to any other modern tank? I don't know. I mean, I can get to the fire control panel for uh, an M1A2 SCP uh, Abrams um, caboose. Here's, here's fire control. Okay, so that's the ammunition selection. There's a, a magnification, 3x to 10x. Gun selection. I don't know, there's going to be a label there, but there's some sort of filter there. Thermal mode. Polarity for the, uh, for the lens. Reticle, don't know what the symbol does. Brightness, contrast, auto. Brightness, contrast, focus, far or near. Magnification. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> mode drift. Um, anti glare. 
anti glare up here. Honestly, yeah, this doesn't look that complicated. And this, I mean, this is fire control. Yeah, I, I, I think if you had a couple of minutes, you might, you know, yeah. So here's that location. This is fire control. So what we were looking at was right over here. Seems to be some sort of communication system over here. Loading, it's going to be the fucking thing. Loading this and not getting your hand mangled is probably going to be the biggest trick. But, I mean, he's just got trigger controls down here. Just a simple squeeze and pull once everything's done. Yeah, I honestly don't think it would be that complicated. Oh yeah, Caboose, it is. It, it very, it most assuredly is. I don't know what the hardest part would be, I mean, Aspen, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's up nonsense. Jesus Christ. Here's a picture of a California gas station that now has gas that is more expensive than minimum wage. That's 729 for 3.78 liters. So. So Planet Labs, um, for those of you who don't know what Planet Labs is, Planet Labs is a private satellite imaging company. Um, they do high resolution scans. Um, they've been tracking activity outside uh, Maripol in Ukraine. And the, um, the mass graves have been extended by over 140 meters just in the, the month of May. Um, yeah, here's, um, well, Rev useful for us because we get access to them. This is in addition to the 13 mobile crematoriums that the, um, um, the, the directorate of the Ministry of Defense uh, for Ukraine stated that were, um, the Russians had um, rolled out in Maripol as well. 
So. Oh, Rev, you fucking. <laughs> if we had a conversation about mill grades, but uh, imaging satellites and resolution size. Yeah. Yeah, Excel. We will fucking. <clears throat> so, in the continuing saga of holy fuck, how stupid is Russia actually? Everyone, meet what um, has been referred to as the Russian Terminator. It's a vehicle. Um, this is a. Um, This is an auto, uh, an armored vehicle with auto cannons on it that has been talked about and rumored, and it is a uh, caboose. The interesting thing about it is, is that you'll see that there's a gentleman riding on it. That's because the Russian optics on it are so shitty. Um, and since it's an unmanned turret, it means that the vehicle commander has to ride outside the vehicle between the auto cannons if you want to have situa situational awareness inside the vehicle. Yes. That's how poorly designed this vehicle is, is that functionally speaking, there is no, um, there is no ability to truly look around and get a good look. So yes, the, the commanders of these vehicles have been spotted numerous times, apparently just riding up, up top because it's easier. Yeah. That's how shitty Russian design is at this point. So what you're saying is one sniper make tank go blind. Yes. hundred percent. This is, this is a mobile armored um, auto cannon platform who has basically zero visibility. No, pound coin. <clears throat> so... Basically, what they did is they took the old T-72 base, they renamed it T-90, they threw some um, ERA packs on it um, that had been functionally obsolete since, what, the 90s or some, th some shit like that. Um, literally every handheld anti-tank weapon that the Ukrainians possess at this point will just open that vehicle. That's it's just... Brilliant, shitty Russian engineering. Oh, for fuck's sake. There you go. Here's a clearer shot of it. This is what it looks like. Oh God, Peru runs them. Let's see who runs them? Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Algeria, Russia, and Peru. Definitely the heavy hitters. Definitely the heavy hitters. Um, UK military decide they want to replace their current armor with a modular Ajax, a frame with a bunch of different turret packages for different roles. This episode's holster ship box and riding in more than 20 minutes will result in permanent hearing damage and joint damage from vibration. Sounds about right. Um, 
the British really should just leave the uh, <clears throat> weapon design to the experts at this point. Um, as much as I just buy so much military spending, we gotta get rid of the DARPA. Yeah. Seriously, optics aren't that hard to do. How do you fuck up optics that badly? Um, I honestly don't even think... I, I Caboose, I think that the optics ports... I think the optics ports are probably so limited um, that they probably... If I had to guess, there's probably a viewport like an old school hatch viewport. I think that you probably have some shitty black and white, barely color, maybe fucking screen about this big somewhere in that, in that thing. And then there's like probably some shitty little viewport like this somewhere. And that's it. And I, I would wager a guess to see something, you have to rotate the entire turret. I'm guessing the optics are attached to the turret and literally follow the turret. They're probably not independently focused. So, yeah, if I had to wager a guess, that's probably what you're dealing with is some insanely limited fucking optic systems. Let's see. Yeah, everything's mounted to it. Yeah. Everything's mounted to it. There's no independent swivels up here. The whole thing is just based on the turret. I think there's I think there's your fucking viewport too, by the way. Yeah. I think your optics on this tank. There's another viewport. There's another viewport. There's one for the gunner. There's one for the tank commander. Yep. They're relying on old school fucking viewports. So, Technic technically not a tank, um, but yeah, Russia's a joke. Russia's a joke. Might as well throw a periscope on top. That actually help a lot, dude. The periscope would actually help a lot. Like a legitimate periscope on top of that would solve a whole bunch of stuff. Oh. <laughs> yeah, technically not a tank. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so Georgia State University uh, scientists and students and grad students, it's always grad students, um, have created hyper aggressive uh, hamsters by editing. What's up, AJ? Um, so <laughs> they were engaged in a gene editing experiment with some hamsters. Uh, they used CRISPR Cas9 uh, to edit out a um, uh, the uh, the actions of a neurochemical uh, signaling pathway that's associated with um, kidneys, actually. And the male, both male and female hamsters started displaying high aggression towards same sex individuals. So fucking, I got Two things to say to you, Karina. If fucking a hooking a monkey's nuts up to a car battery will help cure cancer, red's positive, black's negative. Who gives a fuck? Um, is what it is. So, yeah. 
basically they um they uh they eliminated the ability for vasopressin to um be signaled and recognized in the body um <clears throat> fucking <laughs> i'm calling Peter. why you want to kill a dog you, you looking to murder a pet because that's what fucking all Peter's is good for it's murdering your pet um yeah, it was the AVPR one uh, A receptor, um, but they they published their uh, they published their findings in the uh, proceedings of National Academy of Sciences, and yeah, that's that's what it fucking quote. We were really surprised at the results. We anticipated that if we eliminated vasopressin activity, we would bo reduce both aggression and social communication, but the opposite happened. Instead, the hamsters without the receptor showed much higher levels of social communication behavior than did their counterparts with intact receptors. Even more interestingly, the typical sex differences observed in aggressiveness were eliminated with both female and male hamsters displaying high levels of aggression towards other same-sex individuals. Um, so... Yeah. <sighs> and y'all saw the uh, Oklahoma State representative proposed uh, legislation. Um, credit where credit's due. Who is what's this guy's name? Let me get this guy's name. Hang on. Um, representative Mickey Dollins. Representative uh, Representative Mickey Dollins. Uh, I mad respect, man. He, um, this has nothing to do with sexuality just because same sex, when members of the same sex encounter each other in the wild, oftentimes they, uh, they try to achieve dominant status and fight. Same sex doesn't automatically f mean f gay people. The phrase same sex just means interactions with those of the same sex as you. You fucking weirdos. Met the male hamsters fought, 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 the, uh, fought the male hamsters. Um, either way, back to fucking Mickey Dolans. Mickey Dolans, um, straight up, uh, in, uh, is putting forth a bill before the Oklahoma State Legislature um, that would mandate a hey, punk that would mandate each male in the state of Oklahoma when they reach puberty to get a mandatory vasectomy reversible only when they reach a quote point of financial and emotional stability. In his own words, if you think that's crazy, then I think you maybe uh, understand how 50% of Oklahomans feel well, uh, feel as well. Yeah, M Mickey, Mickey Dolans is a smarmy fuck and I appreciate him for it. So thank God somebody's dealing with this oaky breeding problem. Oh... Uh... I mean, Caboose, I think it's crazy, but I also think that f forcing women to have unwanted pregnancies is crazy. So, you know. Yeah, like, the whole thing is fucking batshit insane as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, Oklahoma is like Phoenix. Just humanity wasn't meant to be there, and God is punishing them for a testament. Uh, for it's a testament of our hubris. Um, Kavas, twenty seven hundred plus travel costs. I can give you the doctor's name.
Um, yeah. Um, it depends which side of the country you're in, which which direction you need to go. You either need to go to Michigan or you need to go to uh, Tijuana, Mexico. If you're if you're on that side of the country or the northern part of the country, you go to Michigan. Uh, if you're in the southern part of the country or you're in the west coast, you go to TJ. So yeah. Um, oh, if you're in Michigan, if you're in Michigan, dude, you got you got a doctor in Michigan that's like one of the most notorious, um, like trans um, informed consent surgeons in the country. He's still operating. Oh, you need to go to Michigan. Yeah. Um, is that Arknov? I think it's Arknov. I think his name is Arknov. Arknov. Um, it's with the A's. Interesting. I just noticed that. Um, yeah, I think the guy's name is Arknov in Michigan. Uh, the one in Tijuana is Aguilera. Um, but either way, it's like three grand for just... <laughs> What's up, Puka? So. Oh, yes. This. This, 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 this. Copy image address. Let's fucking do this. Um, image, copy image address. I'd tell you go to Mexico before the dude in um, Michigan. Cat, uh, Thailand is no longer the recommended location. It's cheaper, but the doctors aren't very good, and the society is very aggressive. Honestly, Mexico is the number one trans desti surgical destination in the world at present. They have some of the best doctors. They are certified for North American and U.S. Uh, um, um, uh, practice, but they operate in Mexico because they can do informed consent. Legitimately. Yeah, Mexico is the destination for trans surgeries on a global scale now. Um, Thailand, Vietnam, all Cambodia, all those have gone the way of the dinosaur. If you want the world's best, you go to Mexico. Yeah, and uh, TJ, Tijuana is, um, there's two locations in Mexico that are notorious for it at this point. Tijuana, and I forget the other one. It's a little further down. Um, but yeah, Mexico is the destination country for, um, like gender affirming surgery. Plus, you know, you can get a good, good beach vacation out of it too while you're at it. Um, and they, for the most part, speak English, <laughs> uh, and tacos, tacos, tacos. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, look, you know, you're going to be a little pinchy in the trunks for a minute. You might as well have a taco. Mexico always has your back anyway. Ah, uh, caboose. Mexico's a fucking great place to take a vacation. I've only been there twice and I love both times. <laughs> Puka. Tacos are always nice. Exactly. Yeah, but actual tacos so far. <laughs> like, that's... Dude, I'm telling you. Like, all right, you know. You're probably going to get a spinal. Get a new taco. Eat tacos. Right? Yeah. Uh, well, I can't... I don't know. Um, uh, no, cat. Actually, like, the foremost surgeon in North America for gender affirming surgery operates out of Tijuana. He, uh, he has multiple uh, facilities across this country, uh, across this country, across Mexico. Um, but like it's, it, the facility from what I remember is down in like the Rodeo drive area that, that bougie ass shopping center. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's where the thing is I can survive TJ. Anybody can survive TJ these days. It's not like the fucking late eighties, early nineties Tijuana. Fucking TJ is a totally survivable fucking day trip. You just fucking walk across the border. You go to San Diego, you literally walk across the border. It's great. Good night, Ask. Ah. Stop being a self hating Mexican cat. I couldn't survive in Tijuana too hot. Eh, they have a they have a down season. They have a cool season. Uh, it's 
South Ontario is too hot. Too hot for me. Fair enough. I, I what 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 does what does question mark question mark question mark question mark mean, Glazy? What the fuck are you asking? What are you questioning? Um so I'm in one of the Chud states. Only upside uh, right now, I won't say which one. Cat, only upside about TJ is the martial arts scene. Also brothels if that's your speed. Um, Dr. Aguilera Tijuana. There he is. There he is. There you go. Dr. Ivan Aguilar, uh, Aguilar. Um, founder and CEO of the Mexico Transgender Center. Um, yeah, he's he's literally, you know, American uh, American Neurological Association. He, you know, yeah, this guy, by all accounts, does some of the best work in the world, actually, right now. I've heard multiple things about him. I've seen his work. Um, yeah, he's got he's got multiple surgical facilities in Mexico. Yeah. I always wanted to visit Mexico. Had a good friend from Cancun missing. Uh, Cancun is mathematically the. Uh, oh yeah, here I'll show you this too while you're at it. Like literally, they'll straight up tell you like this is what it costs. Um, also, he's notorious for doing non-standard surgeries because he does uh, Aguilar does informed consent surgeries. Um, if you got something weird that you're into that you're just like, dude, I'm doing it. Aguilar will, um, help you. He'll be like, sure, whatever. You, you want to keep your nuts and chop your willy off? He'll chop your willy off for you and keep your nuts. Um, he'll like, he'll whatever. He'll whatever. Yeah. Like you just want a urethral reroute. Um, he'll do it. Like, it, yeah, the guy's notorious for just be like, what do you need? What do you want? What will make you feel better? I'll do it. Um, so yeah, he's got a he's got a global reputation at this point. Um, yeah, the, the the U.S. doctors are aging out of the practice at this uh, at this time. Apparently, the dude in Washington D.C. who used to uh, a nut gina, yeah, dude, he he'd help. Yeah. He, he legitimately, but th that's his reputation is like, he's apparently a very skilled plastic surgeon, um, a very skilled urologist, and he will do what you want. So, yeah. Um, let's see. All right. So here's the, uh, the Chinese thing. <laughs> Oh, uh, so the Chinese human, um, the Chinese, uh, Chinese human resources and social security bureau officially announced that 16 violations against labor laws will no longer be punished from 2022. Um, the Jiangsu province issued a new notice that 16 violations against China's, China's labor laws will no longer be punished here. Um, here, here are some of them. Uh, I will get you here. His name is Dr. Ivan Aguilar and Lillian, there is the link in chat. Um, so some of the, th uh, some of the things that, um, are no longer going to be, um, <clears throat> penalized. New adjustments made in labor contract law that following behaviors, if impact is minor, will not be penalized. Okay? Seize the files or other documents of workers who have terminated or been terminated their labor contracts according to law. Seizing workers' resident identity cards and other licenses. Taking money or property from workers in the name of guarantee or other means. Rules and regulations which directly affect the vital interests of workers violate laws and regulations. <laughs> 
trying to basically just go in full on like, yeah, whatever. Workers don't matter. Hey, you're welcome, Lillian. <clears throat> so. Here we go for everything, literally. I, gotta, I, 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 my goal is to die with like a list of just names, like names, phone numbers, and email addresses, basically like just a little black book. It's like, there's, what is that? That's Kai's little black book. What's it for? If you need anything, you open the little black book. Like, what do you mean? Anything? I mean, anything. If you need anything, you just check the little black book and somewhere in there will be a guy who can like it. What do you need? You need secure passage to South America. I got a guy for that. You need duck fat. I got a guy for that. You need a good massage. I got a guy for that. He needs gender affirming surgery. I got a guy for that. <laughs> Hugs. Yeah, dude, I actually have a guy for that. Um, yeah, I seized their ID, but only in a minor way, not a major way. Yeah, China, China just going full mask off and saying, fuck, fuck the, oh, fuck the workers. The workers don't matter. God bless China. Uh, yeah, Otis, I'd put Otis in for the hugs guy. Uh, let's see. Let's close the uh, CISE report. Oh, I got I want a hugs guy. Like I said, I got a guy for everything. Uh, close that. All right. Now, let me move this. Where's my guy? Where's my guy? Where's my guy? Come on, come on, come on. There he is. There he is. I'm gonna fucking move you to the front of the line. Uh, Aspen, I'm a hugs guy if anyone needs one. Do we know it? Uh. Hey, Wolada. Hey, Wolada. Solid typo. Solid typo. Uh, we'll deal with it if it if it if it becomes a thing. All right. Popo's bizarre adventures. So this week on Popo's bizarre adventures. In the continuing saga that is the San Jose Police Department, these motherfuckers are on a tear. Now, for those of you who've been for the past, like, two or three Popo's Bizarre Adventures, you've been hearing about the San Jose Police Department over and over and over because the San Jose Police Department, I don't know, is up to some shit. More, Karina, more. Yes, Puka. Fucking these guys. Yes, more. Fucking San Jose. <laughs> San Jose is on some shit. I don't know what San Jose is on about. I don't know what their deal is. But the San Jose Police Department is just banging them up. Banging them up. Okay, so for the recap. <laughs> I'm about to say San Jose again? So for those who, those of you who, do, who need the recap. Okay, several weeks ago, San Jose Police Department had a police officer uh, palm a baggie of white drugs. Um, he thought it was cocaine. He thought it was cocaine. <laughs> he thought it was cocaine. It wasn't cocaine. This motherfucker stole some drugs from, uh, uh, from somebody at a scene, palmed a little baggie. He thought it was coke, went home, did a fucking fat rail of it, and just dead. Just dead. It was it was fucking fentanyl. The whole bag. It was fentanyl. The bag was fentanyl, right? He fucking did a line of fucking fentanyl. <laughs> dead, right? This is a few weeks ago. Now, it's a couple of few weeks ago. Then they fucking have uh, yes, yes. Um, so then 
they have a fucking um, they have the uh, the the kidnapping, right? Um, kidnapping of three month old uh, baby boy and the apartment. They're going to do the investigation, and one of the cops shows up just drunk as a skunk. Like, I fucking will find your baby for you. Okay, one of their guys shows up like straight up. Fuck, I'm so I probably didn't know if he was dead. Uh, straight up drunk. Like, straight up drunk to the scene. Um, same fucking kidnapping case. One of the cops shows up drunk to the scene. You know what happens next? At that same scene, a cop peels off and goes into another room and starts rubbing one out. Yes. So, while the San Jose Police Department is supposed to be investigating the kidnapping of a three-month-old boy, what's actually happening at the scene is one of their officers is drunk as a skunk. One of their officers is masturbating in one of the side rooms. Right? Like, this is two separate cops at the same scene. Right? Fast forward another week. One of their cops is fucking playing bumper cars on the goddamn fucking highway, hitting like ramps and shit and fucking douche, douche, hits two cars drunk as well. So uh, fucking just keep moving forward in fucking San Jose. Okay. So another fucking, uh, another few days goes by and there's a domestic violence call and this cop shows up and he's fucking drunk. Another cop, a different cop shows up to this DV call and he's fucking hammered. Well, we just found out that the same cop who showed up to the DV call hammered um, was actually already under investigation for sexual assault because he had been, um, he pulled a woman over for a DUI arrest and he, um, well, <clears throat> He started groping her. He, <laughs> he, 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 he put his hands uh, up her shirt, uh, mother and 23-year-old daughter at the scene, starts groping her, and then he places his hand inside his zipper. He fucking zips his pants down, puts his hand into the zipper, and begins r massaging and rubbing his crotch in front of this mother-daughter pair. And actively, same guy. Same, <laughs> same guy. <laughs> so the dude who fucking was, um, was, uh, who showed up to the domestic violence call was fucking just like absolutely groping himself in front of this mother and daughter. The 23 year old's father straight up said he witnessed him. He fucking, he, the cop turns faces out of the kitchen with his erect penis. This is a direct quote. Dominguez facing out of the kitchen with his erect penis in his left hand and his right hand on the, on the counter. <laughs> What the fuck, man? What the fuck is going on in San Jose? That's my only question. What is going on in San Jose? Uh, are they actively trying to get a cop spinoff? Cop groping a venerable woman, call me shocked. Yep, this is local crime beat writer, deserves a Pulitzer. I bet they promote him. Buko, oh my God. Placed on administrative leave immediately. He was, uh, he was placed on administrative leave in the wake of the incident. Yes. Uh, he, was, he was a four-year veteran. Um, he, um, this isn't his first incident, by the way. You can't tell him to leave. He just came. Um, this isn't his first incident as well. At a Memorial Day party, um, a fucking... Oh, yeah, it was great public. Um, at a Memorial Day party last year, he was accused of sexually harassing and sexually assaulting a woman in her own backyard. So, like, yeah. Like, it's just every week for the past few weeks when I do a Popo's Bizarre Adventures, San Jose is in the news again. Frankly, I'm kind of enjoying it, and I'm going to be sad when there isn't a San Jose officer in the news next week or the week after or something like that. When we finally drop San Jose from the fucking list for a week or two, I'm going to be kind of bummed. It's been a fun run with San Jose at this point. Uh, are they going for a record or something? I, you know, maybe. 
Maybe there's some sort of internal um, department competition that we're not aware of. I don't know. Never know. So, uh, let's see. Detective Leslie Smith. Um, Detective Leslie Smith. I wish I had a photo of Detective Leslie Smith. Let me um, see if I can't find you a photo of Detective Leslie Smith. There's a LinkedIn page, but no active photo. Um, so well, let's see how it goes. They're only going to stop when they run out of cops. <laughs> Um, Detective Leslie Smith is a 17-year veteran of the Seattle Police Department um, who is <laughs> um, who is now the sergeant in charge of the department's Office of Professional Accountability, which uh, investigates officers for misconduct. Um, as uh, so you know, she uh, is not responding to any inquiries is about this, but here's what you need to know. At least 50 Seattle rape and sexual abuse cases stalled for at least eight to 10 years because they never left Detective Leslie Smith's desk. This is literally like a case of... Uh, of a Seattle detective um, just filing cases in their desk. This is, this is, I mean, this is literally what this is. It's just poof. Lost rape kits as a result of this. It, this I mean, cases stalled for better part of a decade. Because Detective Leslie Smith, thanks for the follow, Country Rose. Uh, because Detective Leslie Smith of Seattle Police Department and of the uh, Office of Professional Accountability just didn't pursue any of them. Uh, yeah, like they're 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 investigating like criminal charges and that sort of thing, um, but they're they're having to distribute the the cases to other detectives um the fucking Seattle the the fucking Kathleen O'Toole the chief of police of Seattle um is is quote furious um you know the fucking assistant chief of police called it indefensible uh police captain uh Deanna Nolet has taken over uh the sexual assault unit um uh-huh. <laughs> And so, you know, yeah, like it's, it's, it's just, they straight up just didn't do anything. So yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, thanks detective Leslie Smith for the, like, you know, dozens of rapists just wandering around Seattle because detective Smith couldn't be bothered to do her fucking job. Apparently. <clears throat> um Xavier Ingram Xavier Ingram um is 29. He requires round the clock care. Um in 2014 he was 20 years of uh, 20 yeah, I'm sure they do. 20 years of age. Um Camden County, so we're in New Jersey. Um good old New Jersey. Um, Xavier Ingram, um, is, um, well, he has committed the most egregious crime possible that you can commit in the, uh, great land of freedom and equality that is America. He, um, he's a black man. He's a black man. Um, they, three Camden County police officers, um, They chased him down. They fucking um, 
absolutely beat the ever-loving fuck out of him. They failed to provide adequate medical assistance when his legs went numb in the middle of their beating of him. <clears throat> and now he's a quadriplegic. It is the largest ever payout for police brutality. $10 million. $10 million. Of course, he's a quadriplegic, so what does it fucking matter? That $10 million is going to go directly to his medical care for the rest of his life. Um, but, yes, the um, <clears throat> defendants were Camden County Police Department, then Assistant Chief of Police, and then Police Chief, as well as County Police Officers. Ah, uh, yes, here are the three. Uh, the, the, no, no. Now, of course, the cops didn't pay a fucking lick of it. Nicholas Marchiafava, uh, Antonio Ganetta, and Jeremy Merck. Um, these are the three police officers, Camden County police officers, who beat Mr. Ingram within an inch of his life. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he probably will outlive that money. Yeah. Um, and caused him to be a quadriplegic. Um, the it was a civil case, um, but the jury deadlocked. And um, last week, the parties involved in the suit reached this record-breaking ten million dollar settlement uh, ahead of a new trial. <sighs> but. Yes, they viciously beat him. Uh, one of the officers placed his boot on the back of Ingram's neck and then intentionally stepped down forcefully. Um, they then failed to um, provide adequate medical assistance. They forcefully continued to move him. They failed to stabilize his spine, thus rendering him permanently and completely paralyzed. This was, of course, after he was laying down on the wet street in full surrender, arms spread out in front of him, and then they jumped on top of him, literally. So, <clears throat> yes. The terrible, terrible crime of being a black man in this country. Do I have a... Uh, yeah, I have a... Uh, I have a, we'll get you this photo. This is Brian Flayev. <clears throat> he is um, of Fremont uh, in Sandusky County, uh, uh, Ohio, for those of you who don't know where Sandusky is. Um, He's, um, he's charged with, well, a couple of things. Um, this man was a uh, dispatcher. He was a dispatcher for the county sheriff's, off, uh, sheriff's office. That's what he did. Um, eight felony offenses, <laughs> sex crimes committed against uh, teenagers, uh, two third-degree felony counts of importuning, two fourth-degree felony counts of gross sexual imposition, fourth third-degree count uh, of uh, felony count of gross sexual imposition. Um, yes. He was a former Ohio State Highway Patrol uh, officer who operated as dispatcher for the Sandusky Post. Um, he basically liked to masturbate in front of teens and then offer them money to join in. Um, he would buy them alcohol, he would invite them to watch porn, and he'd offer money to minors uh, to participate with him. We don't know how many uh, victims there, there are because this goes back over a decade. So we're not entirely sure, but the, the, it seems like it begins 10 to 15 years ago, um, but... With these sorts of things, there's no firm way to even know for sure. But hey, another cop who, um, you know, rapes kids. Uh, I want to get you. Uh, I want to get you this guy's photo as well. 
if I can't. Nearly a year. Shut the fuck up. Can we just get... There we go. Oh. I, I paused you. Pause. Stay paused. Uh. Uh, let's see. Here's here's the hilarious part. There we go. Officer Vieira Gonzalez, who was in charge of his canine uh, canine dog. What did he do? Uh, by the way, the dog's name was Zena. Um, Zena died after she cooked to death in the back of his um, car. He left a two-year-old canine in the back of his, uh, his vehicle on June 23rd of last year. Um, he left, their, left the dog just in the back in Florida. By the way, this is Florida, Brevard County. Fucking, we're in Cocoa, Florida. Um, he decided that, like, a, a car in the middle of June in Florida was an appropriate place to leave his dog um, for an entire training class. He just fucked off and went to an entire training class, and this dog literally cooked to death in the... Um, back of his patrol vehicle. Now, people have gotten 45 years for the um for the causing the death of a canine officer because a canine is treated as an officer of the law if one of us peasants, us peons dares harm it. But if an officer kills their uh, their dog, nothing. Nothing. As near as we can tell, this officer has had a single animal, uh, a single charge of animal cruelty was recommended, but the state attorney's office chose not to prosecute. Literally, just nothing. That uh, that officer, Officer Gonzalez Vieira Gonzalez cooked a dog to death in the back of his fucking patrol uh, patrol car in the middle of June in Florida and nothing is going to be done to him. Uh, people have, I, I know we've seen 45 and up cases uh, for, uh, for fucking dogs before, impossible. So definitely could be. Ah, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so. Uh, Detroit, Michigan. A Michigan, um... A Michigan couple had their building and all of the assets um, seized by their town, Highland Park suburb, right? So a 13,000 square foot building that was owned by uh, Justina and Matt Cosbial um, was given an impromptu fire code inspection. Now, the city officials found that they had a marijuana grow operation inside. Blah, 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 drugs. The Cosbiels, uh, Cosbiels, immigrants from Poland, by the way, they had a state license to grow, med uh, to grow medical cannabis, but the city seized the building and held on to it for 17 months without charging them with a crime anyway. All right? They fucking, they took all their assets. They fucking took the cash. They took the cars. They took the building. They took all the assets inside, um, even though at the state level they were legal. All right? Now, 
in response to an interrogatory that was filed by the, the, the Cosby's uh, lawsuit against Highland Park, a city police answer, uh, officer answered none when he asked to identify any predicate felony offenses justifying the seizure. So literally even the cops were like, yeah, we have no justification for this. We just took their shit. Fuck you. Right? So the, the Cosby's um, received, <laughs> let's call it a settlement offer from the town. Stop growing cannabis and buy two vehicles for the local police department and you can have your stuff back. Now, this went so far as to a Highland Park police officer ferried a message from city attorney Terry Ford. Uh, The officer's name was Mark Delden. He ferried a message. He acted as uh, as a messenger for the city attorney, guy by the name of Terry Ford. They sent a quote to the Cosbills for two cars from a local Ford dealership totaling about $70,000. This is the definition of extortion, kids. This is literally the legal definition of extortion. So give us two cop cars and we'll give you your building back. But there was no crime. There was no forfeiture process even. They just stole. They just stole. This wasn't even a properly run civil asset forfeiture. This is literally just highway robbery. They they did not do any of the necessary uh, processing for civil asset forfeiture. It wasn't forfeited. (coughs) They just took their shit and then said, we'll give it back if you buy us two cars. So, yeah. I mean, that comes on the heels of the highway robbery stories out of California where they had to give back the $1.1 million that the San Bernardino um, Sheriff's Office was stealing from armored trucks, armored uh, armored cash carriers. Uh, oh, yeah. Dude, in, in this country, um, AJ, impossible. Um in this country, civil asset forfeiture accounts for more than all of the uh, cr- typically criminal forms of uh, theft combined. The only one that that doesn't include is wage theft. Um, wage theft is its own ball game. But as far as like larceny, burglary, home invasions, grand theft auto, all of the typical forms of blue collar theft combined are less than civil asset forfeiture in this country. The cops steal more than the criminals do in our country. Straight up. Um, I watched a uh, a great breakdown of the Louisville Police Department, too, in fact. Um, Louisville Police Department, they're the ones who did the Breonna Taylor shooting. They um, have been busted time and again for... um, just home invading people, like straight up robbery, just home invasions. Uh, one, uh, one witness slash criminal, uh, one, one snitch, one um, CI um, who worked with some of those guys, one of whom was on the Breonna Taylor squad that fucking killed her, has, has given testimony that he has seen them steal from drug dealers in the town $500,000 and divide it amongst themselves, amongst the, the, the drug task force. And then that money just disappears. Uh, it never gets registered. Like, the Louisville Police Department is kind of like high watermark for civil asset forfeiture because they don't even do the civil asset forfeiture. The Louisville Police Department has been caught time and again just stealing, just straight up stealing. Um, and so, yeah, there's an attorney who like, like literally like has, has spoken about how he has clients that, you know, are drug dealers. And he said, oh yeah, we have, my clients have drugs go missing all the time. He said, look, if somebody takes something from your house, chances are you might or might not know how much money you have. You might not know how much stuff you have. He said, I assure you, somebody who's dealing drugs knows exactly how much drugs they have. He said the Louisville Police Department takes drugs all the time. The, the interviewer asked the guy, he said, so like, how do your clients react to that? He said, oh, they're super happy when that happens. He's like, what? He said, the drugs aren't going to get reported. He said, there's no drug charges. He said, when, when, uh, uh, he said, when a kilo or five ounces of cocaine just goes missing, 
He said, that's just an extra trafficking charge that my client doesn't have to worry about. And we all know who took it. He said, it's just the cost of doing business. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. The, um, what's up? Um, the, 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 the same crew, the same crew that shot up Breonna Taylor fucking had their own CIs come forward and say they've taken $500,000 at a time from drug dealers. Also, one of the ga- same guys that was on the Breonna, Breonna Taylor squad has raped like untold women, untold women. Like he's been just raping up a storm. Right, like that that entire crew that surrounds the the Breonna Taylor shooting actually is like known for other things. That drug interdiction task force, oh yeah. They're super fucking notorious apparently for raping young women, for stealing from the drug dealers. Oh yeah, it's just par for the course. So to see a, an entire town organize around this principle of just holding people's stuff hostage until they fund the police department. I mean, that's just par for the course at this point, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, Columbia, 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 South Carolina. Not not that Columbia. Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, Hurricane Florence. So a deputy who left two women who were seeking mental health treatment trapped in a cage in the back of a fucking police van while they were swept away by floodwaters. Um, the dude, uh, the, the ironically fucking, um, the deputy's name was Stephen flood. Stephen flood left to, mentally disabled fucking women who needed mental health treatment trapped in a cage in a police van and left them to the floodwaters. Um, it took 30 minutes to reach a verdict, by the way, 30 minutes was all it took for the verdict. Took a little bit for him to fucking, you know, actually get charged and actually get tried. Um, but Yes, one of the women was seeking medicine for her fear and anxiety, um, and one of the women was to be committed to a, a, a mental facility um, at a regular mental health appointment by a counselor. Um, and he, like, it is... The floodwaters took the police van off its wheels pinned it against a guardrail, prevented the women from being able to get out the sliding door they used to enter the van. Flood and a deputy with him didn't have a key to the second door, and there was no emergency hatch. The deputy spoke to the women, tried to keep them calm, but when it got too dangerous, well, peace. They left. Now, how did they end up on that road? Well, that road was Highway 76, just outside of Nichols, South Carolina. And that road was barricaded by the National Guard due to the floodwaters. Flood, Officer Flood, drove around the barricades and continued in. So, yeah. <sighs> Is this the guy that... No, different guy. Oh, yeah, we'll just do the quick... Here, I'll show this to you guys so you can just see the quick... Just the dumbest and most entitled people alive. Yep, basically. Um, a former Knox. No, 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 no. You're gonna, you're gonna love this. Jesus Christ, uh, AJ. I want to know more about that later. A former Knoxville police officer today pleaded guilty to lying. A former Knoxville police officer today pleaded guilty to lying on an arrest warrant. This. <laughs> uh. 
according to the Knox County District Attorney General's Office. They say former Knoxville police officer Joseph Roberts pleaded guilty to lying on an arrest warrant. He resigned from his position after they say he initiated a traffic stop that led to a high speed chase. No, he 100% the DA's like office Nazi. says he turned off his body and cruiser cameras and denied being involved in the chase. The former officer's attorney said in his words, he is a young man who made a grave error and is paying a high price. He implores the forgiveness that is earned through future acts of meeting society's standards. <laughs> Isn't that great? Isn't that great? This officer engaged in a dangerous high-speed uh, pursuit that, uh, that ended up poorly. He turned off his body camera and his cruiser camera to engage in said high-speed pursuit and then lied on all official documentation saying he wasn't participating in said high-speed dispute. But when he was busted for this, he fucking implores us to understand that it's just a mistake and that... First, the forgiveness that is earned paying a high price. He implores the forgiveness that is earned through future acts of meeting society's standards. He implores the forgiveness that is earned through future acts of meeting society's standards. Really? Do you extend that same courtesy to all of the ex-cons? <clears throat> oh, you don't, do you? Fascinating. Fascinating. Mercy rejected. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be fun. You guys are going to love this one. We're just trying to figure out what's going on, all right? We're working Changing locks. Oh, my God. Look. All right. Let's fucking roll this back. So, welcome to South Jersey. Forgiveness was based on future acts, huh? Yeah, it's it's, it's tech support. Glad you. It's what I. It's what I thought too. It's like, wait a second, you haven't even foot and done anything. Um, y'all love this. Y'all will love this one. Working in a white neighborhood. Oh, a pair of black locksmiths were called out. They did. They're just a pair of locksmiths, right? They just happened to be black. A pair, of blo uh, a pair of locksmiths got called out to change the locks um, on, a, uh, on a house. That's, it's that simple. Fucking renters have moved out. Come change the locks. How well you think this goes? Order. All right, okay. well, we'll figure that out, dude. You gotta. Chill. We're just trying to figure out what's going on. All right. We're, we're burglarizing the We're working. Changing locks. Oh my god, look at this shit. <laughs> no Is there anybody else in the house? No, oh, we're doing the work order. <gasps> Newman Leary. Oh, it's that time to report you again. Let's see. User. Let's see. You know, it'd be in chat messages. Um, search. So we have a new thing, uh, account ban evasion. Uh, let's see. Tell us more. Newman Leary number. Let's see. He's gone through like uh, seven accounts now and y'all still can't do shit. Congrats. Submit. Close. Um... And we're gone. There we go. Anyway, and by the way, I've lived, I've lived amongst the blacks, Newman. <laughs> oh, I've lived amongst them. I've had sex amongst them. Um, go fuck yourself, you Nazi garbage piece of shit. Honestly, I hope you get the world that you want because you won't be considered white and you will end up exterminated from it. Homie, you're asking for stupid shit. Anyway, back to the stupidity. Into the lock, you see the fucking drill set, right? Oh my God, look at this shit. So, <laughs> oh, 
there anybody else in the house? No, oh, we're doing the work order. Changing the lock. You see the fucking drill set, right? You guys watch him. We'll go. Okay. So that is an officer attempting to flank these locksmiths um, with an, a suppressed AR-15. That is a fully suppressed AR-15 in his hands. Um, put your phone down. No. I can record. Put this is a free. Just put your phone. Just, I don't want what you have in your hands. No, nah, I don't trust you. You can leave it on. I don't so, trust you. So don't, just don't put it on him. We ain't doing nothing wrong. We're here to change the lock change. Understood. We're here for a complaint. That's all. Okay. We ain't doing nothing wrong. Yeah, we. That's what we had to do. We got. We got to break the locks. We got to change the locks. Doing your job while black. Hundred percent. Every single one of these fucking pigs needs fucking handled. Simple as that. Every single one of these fuckers is a racist piece of shit who wants to do some damage. That motherfucker getting super aggro, walking all the way down the street with a fucking suppressed AR-15. See, people like us out Like us out here. Yeah. yeah. They're not used to black people. Burger in progress. What the fuck? Yo, I'm sitting there. I say, yo, they're going to get two cops. Y'all like, for real? For real? And they've got the notice taped on the door. They've got all of their tools out. They've got a work van in front in the middle of the day. They're making no attempt at cover. They're being loud. They're like literally the opposite of what you would do if you were going to properly burglarize this place. What's up, Gemma? Yeah, it's not terrible. And you notice they're all fucking bald, Nazi twat looking fat white pieces of shit. Who's, uh, who's in charge? Me. You are? Okay. Do you have an idea on you? And you notice the cops just gained entry into that house as well, right? Cops gained access to the house. Gave it a, gave it a walk through just to see if they couldn't get anything else have to do uh, uh going with it either fucking absolute garbage human beings broad daylight with a bag full of tools right so i don't know if i showed you guys yeah is this yeah okay <clears throat> See if I can't get some. Photos here for you. Wonder what the pig stole. Probably something, right? One of them probably had to wank. Working while black, huh? Wait, why are black Africans yes, kidnapped? It's said again. It's some weird racism. Laying concrete floor, cops walking around to check and fact you laid the concrete. How I think cops cop, yeah, basically. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't take any. Oh, no, they 100% did with her. They 100% did. Yeah, they stole some shit. They always do. Um, they always do. So... So we're back in Florida. We're back in Florida. (sighs) 
the cops approach a gentleman on a dirt bike at a gas station. The cop, who will, uh, right here, Deputy David Crawford, approached the victim, Gene Barreto, and <clears throat> tackled him. He tackled him to the ground. He said, get off, get off the bike, get on the ground now. He then tackles him, not allowing Mr. Barreto to put the pump, the nozzle of the pump, back into the receptacle. As a result, what happens is that Mr. Barreto and the dumb motherfucker right here, off uh, Deputy Crawford, get doused in gasoline, and then Crawford acknowledges the gas, saying, kill the pump, kill the pump, there's gas. A fellow officer drops his taser. Crawford picks up the taser, warning Beretta, you're Beretto, you're going to get tasered again, dude. He then fires the taser. Moments later, this happens. Officer Beretto ignites the gasoline from the arc from the taser. And while the officers attempt to put out Barreto's legs, you can see in the background, I'm sorry, uh, while the officers attempt to put out Crawford's legs, you can see in the background Barreto literally cooking alive. They did nothing to help him, mind you. And as a result... He ended up with third degree burns on 75% of his body. Because this dumb motherfucker doesn't know an arc can act uh, can ignite gasoline. The police department has stated that if Beretto survives, he will be charged with resisting arrest. What is a prerequisite to be a cop? Less than 75 points IQ? Something like that. Uh, fuck the police. Yep. Yeah. Um, Col uh, uh, C Crawford is facing, uh, facing a misdemeanor charge for being, culp uh, uh, being culpable of negligence for igniting the explosion. But, yes. Not, you know, cooking a man alive. That, that's not a potential charge he's facing. He's just pay, uh, facing a potential charge for uh, negligence. Yes, causing the fire. So, let's hop the pond for a second. Let's jump. Jump to our neighbors across the pond just for a moment. And, well, let's talk about East Devon Councilor John Humphreys. East Devon Councilor John Humphreys uh, made, well, let's just say some interesting accusations about how he was treated by Devon and Cornwall police after he reported his abuser twice before finally being believed. Now, 
Humphrey was allowed to remain as a counselor three years after he'd been arrested for child sex offenses, despite the council knowing he was being actively investigated. Humphreys, who also served as a primary school governor, was imprisoned for 21 years for raping two boys in the 90s and 2000s. The victims, age 12 to 15. <clears throat> the first boy made the full statement by uh, to the uh, Exmouth police uh, uh, police station, where he, fought, uh, he he his mother took him. He uh, signed a full statement. This is in two thousand and four. He quote heard nothing at all except that I became regularly harassed by local police officers there afterwards. In 2005, they just said that the case had been dropped. So when the crimes of Jimmy Savile emerged, the victim says he decided to call the police again. I'd met my partner, and when I found out she was pregnant, I thought, let's do something about it, especially as I'm bringing a child into this world. I rang up to get the case reopened in 2012, and this is when a Tiverton officer called him back and said, Humphreys is now mayor. He's getting on with his life. If you do anything or proceed with this in court, we will come for your friends and family. After another victim of Humphreys' came forward, then the police reopened the investigation. After 2015, a knock came at his mother's house door. It was a female officer, and she told, uh, she told them that someone else had come forward. I'd not been believed twice, but the other victim was a lot older than me and maybe more credible. And then I found out there was a third and a fourth victim, too. But still yet, it took another six years for justice to be done. I mean, what do you say, right? The, the entirety of the police system came to the defense of the mayor. Even though the mayor was a fucking pedophile and had years worth of diddling on his record and, and had previous convictions from the 90s. <laughs> Just give me a name, Jesus Christ. I, I mean, I feel you. Um... Ah, uh, yes. So let me find the <clears throat> let me find the tale as it was told by the cop on this one. Yep, okay. Oh, I'll get the video. Police defend pedophiles? Like, gasp. All states are shit. Ace ass. All right. Um, cool. That's the appropriate level. Let me just get this here. Okay. There we go. All right. So this is the story of a young woman named Trinity Clark. Trinity Clark was dealing with, uh, f with uh, Knoxville, Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, Knoxville, Tennessee is an interesting place. It, um, it's home of the Allen Park Inn where they have, um, I do believe the signs still up for um, sodomy is any sexual interaction that does not, uh, is not intended for the, you know, procreation posted above the beds. It's a, it's a, it, Knoxville is an interesting place. Let's just put it that way. It's a, it's sort of what we might describe as um, ass backwards. Um, so let me describe to you what, <clears throat> the um, officer Roberts here would describe as his interaction with 
uh, Ms. Clark. Um, let's see. Ms. Clark was, uh, Trinity Clark was 21 years of age at the time. So, I mean, you know, also she's younger than the officer as well. Now, based on the incident and use of force reports, this, these are some of the notes. Um, Roberts wrote that Clark turned on East Fifth Avenue at a high rate of speed, causing the tires to squawk. He then proceeded to catch up with the vehicle. Once he got behind the vehicle, um, <clears throat> the vehicle began to accelerate away from him. The vehicle was actively fleeing officers. Um, so just keep some of this in mind, okay? This, this is, this is a, this woman was actively fleeing that it was, uh, that he caught up to her. She was moving at a high speed of, uh, high speed of, uh, rate, a high rate of speed, these sorts of things. Okay. Let's just go look at some of the video. So there was Trinity Clark. Okay. That, that definitely looked like a high rate of speed, right? Definitely a high rate of speed. Uh, going by. And you can hear, even though there's music, hold on. No tire squeal. He glances. Hops in his vehicle. Uh, one thing you'll note, look at the color. You notice you don't see any flashing red or blue. Siren wants at that guy. At no point does she appear to be attempting to get away from him. She's not speeding. She's not. He's just a ways behind her. I got out my car about right here where the tree branches are. Um, do we have? Yep. Okay. I'll let her tell her story. The officer later pulled up behind me. He didn't have his lights on until he came outside his car. And I was standing roughly almost at the front step. Come here. I pulled you over. Come here. Yeah, I did. Get over here. And he started yelling at me, demanding me to come here. And I felt very unsafe. So I stayed right there near the porch. Yeah, I did. Get over here. 36 I was coming out of you. What's wrong? Uh -huh. Come here. And he, I asked him, could he come to me and speak to me directly where I was on the porch? And he comes over. Oh, wait for it. What's going on? Stands over here, doesn't ask me, um, or doesn't tell me nothing was wrong. And I asked multiple times, did I do anything? What was I getting arrested for? What was I getting detained for? There was no response. What's going on? Nothing. Okay. What you want? I didn't do nothing. You tripping. Hey, bro, you tripping. What the fuck? Hey. Hey, it's at this point he has her stripped. Oh, move, I don't got no shirt on, You're bitch. You're being detained. Move, I don't got no shirt on, You're bitch. You're being detained. Move, my titties are out. Oh, God, bitch. Oh, God, oh. Just shut your mouth. Oh, my God. Bruh, shut your mouth. It 
it's at this time he's groping her. He's got his one hand around the front. How about that? Mama! Bro, somebody call my mom. 36, y'all, get us some units up here. We got people coming to the house. Trinity, what's your mama? Yeah, I'm a Get your hands out. No, I don't have no fucking bra. I don't fuck y'all. <clears throat> bro. Bro, let me the fuck go. I don't got no mother. Mama. Mama. Come on. 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 He then lies to all of the responding officers. He then lies on his sworn affidavit. The footage is then reviewed by three separate supervisors. The only notes that that, su that the supervisors had was that he, quote, um... He used foul language and continued cursing. And so their notes was that the cursing would be uh, is a problem. They never said anything about any use of force. Uh, the internal affairs complaints against him never were brought in. The fact that he was five months brand new on the beat was never considered as well. He lied to everyone yes oh yeah oh dead silent on all of the touchy touchy dead silent on all of the lying dead silent on the use of force she was charged with assault on a first responder driving on a suspended license felony evading arrest flight in a vehicle failure to yield right of way resisting stop arrest search and search without a weapon simple possession of marijuana less than one ounce um the officer has resigned and pled guilty to destroying or tampering rec with records um When filling out the warrant request for, uh, for a previous interaction, um, he did he plant the marijuana? Probably. We don't know for sure, but at this point, given that he basically sexually assaulted her on camera, yeah. My complete lack of surprise is disappointing. Yes, yes, yes. Um, he's got previous incidents as well on his record. Oh, yeah, I mean, they should be, but, you know, JAMA, U.S. I know, right, Sonia? Sonia's right. I mean, what? they're allowed to murder people. What's a little sexual assault? I mean, it's fucked, but it's true. Oh, what's up, Zippy? Uh, <laughs> big boots. Um... Five months in in previous incidents already. Yes. Um, he, he wasn't allowed to have his own beat until basically that month. He was that new. And they, they let him out on his own beat. And basically immediately he started having problems. And nobody did shit about it. He had graduated from academy in February of that year. And by June, he was already racking up... Um, Fireable offenses, even though supervisors reviewing his footage didn't say shit about it. Oh, oh, I wish I had the rain. I'm sorry that your tummy hurts, though, Zippy. Um, I have a great idea. I hope we don't have cops. Uh, so, I believe... It is. Okay. 
Um, so let's get the, let's just, I gotta, I gotta get you, I gotta get you her picture. You're going to want to see her. Here she is. <clears throat> this is, um, uh, Shoto Ortiz. Uh, this is Shoto Ortiz. Shoto Ortiz is 34. She was just fired from her job as a deputy constable in Harris County, Texas. Um, she was arrested earlier this week uh, as, a, uh, as a result of, well, some actions, shall we say. Uh, she was a two-year th- two veteran of the force. Um, she, well, she was charged with three counts of bodily injury to a child under 15. She, uh, uh, Shuttle Ortiz has three children. Well, for now, I suppose. They're, well, not even anymore. They're probably in CPS. Um, ages eight, 11, and 12. <clears throat> um, Deputy Ortiz felt that the best way to, um, discipline her children was to use her department issue taser to tase the three children amongst uh, on the hands, shoulder and buttocks. She was tasing her kids. She was tasing her kids. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's the, 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 the Ortiz kids repeated, repeated, uh, reported the abuse to their father, um, told them that they don't feel safe there. And, uh, the, uh, the prosecutor's office made, uh, you know, made a filing after everything came in. Um, the, the boys made consistent statements of abuse by their mom to state child protection workers. Uh, Ortiz and the file, child's children's father are currently going undergoing a divorce anyway. Um, the the taser, um, yes. It, it you know yeah, I she, she tased her kids eight, eleven, and twelve. It's all I got for you, man. Yeah, I I couldn't imagine a mother tasing her children. Especially an eight-year-old, dude. An eight. Imagine tasing an eight-year-old. Let's um. Let's just fucking. What's an eight-year-old look like? So these are like eight-year-olds. This so this is what the average eight-year-old looks like, I guess. <laughs> imagine imagine looking at that face and be like fucking. Tzzz. Wrong fucking button entirely. My bad. Um, Imagine seeing an eight-year-old and just being like, fuck that. (sighs) <sighs> so, 54, 54 former and current uh, California Highway Patrol officers. <laughs> she didn't confuse it for her gun. Jesus Christ, that fucking cunt. That fucking cunt. Uh, 54 former and current uh, California Highway Patrol officers. For those of you that live in our part of the world, even if you don't live in California, you know California Highway Patrol officers. CHP are notorious. CHP are some of the worst motherfuckers walking around. They are ruthless. CHP and uh, 54 former and current CHP officers have been charged in a complex. Well, it's not that complex, but a uh, fucking hate CHP. CHP says caboose. Yeah. Anybody who lives in California fucking or the surrounding area knows CHP. We all fucking hate them. Um, 54 of their officers have been charged with um, a, a fraud scheme. They were basically they were bilking the taxpayers for you know a quarter of a bill a quarter of a million dollars that's that's just basically what it work uh, what it works out to um 
They were, you know, they were each getting a cut. But that 70s TV show made him look so cool. Uh, but they have a TV show. Um, so the division that was responsible for 54 of them, let's see, hang on, let me do some math here. Had 89 officers. 54 of them were engaged in, in fraud, uh, in defrauding the taxpayer. They had 89 officers in this division. 54 of them <laughs> were defrauding the taxpayer. Yes, it is. It's 60% zippy, 60 point something, but it's 60%. Um, over half, well over half of the officers were actively engaged in fraud. <laughs> um, oh, no, a separate, a separate group handled it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 54 got caught, so just, or just 54. It seems like 54. They did a fairly decent, they did a fairly decent job of fucking figuring it out. So the other 40% were be beating their wives. That's the dude zippy, basically. Yeah, 60% were defrauding the taxpayer. 40% were busy at home um, beating their wives. That's why they didn't have time to defraud the taxpayer. New CHP jackass after an accident with a truck told me I should just let it go. Ended up selling, got 4K, drop it, my punk ass. Yeah, fuck CHP. Oh, I this is just a quick, quick hit and run story. Uh, members of the LAPD SWAT team are, um, f well, they're under review. The um, footage from a officer-involved shooting um, with, which turned deadly, the SWAT team officers can be heard saying before the, uh, before the raid, happy hunting. So, and then they went in and shot a dude to death. So there's, there's some reviews going on. Nothing will happen of it, but it's worth noting. Um, the other half were quite happy working advice. CHP pulled me over for going 37 and a 35. Yeah, that sounds about right for CHP. Well, ladies, thank you for protecting the American taxpayer. <laughs> oh. Let's see, and let's see. Oh, yes, the NYPD officer who shot uh, at a driver while off-duty. Um, the officer was having an affair with a married woman, and the person he shot at was the woman's husband. Straight up. Um, we have surveillance footage of the shooting. Uh, the driver of a gray BMW, which the, the officer was driving, shoots out the window aiming for a black smart car driving behind it. The officer doing the shooting out of the BMW is a guy by the name of Kevin Mar uh, Marcial, a 16-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 16-year veteran with the department. And the driver of the smart car is the wo a husband of the woman Marcial is having an affair with. <laughs> The husband found out about the affair, and on, uh, on a Thursday evening, the husband followed the officer in his car, but suddenly it escalated. Like, there was no, like, the guy wasn't fucking honking at him or ramming his car. All of a sudden, it just fucking escalated, and Marcial fucking just fires his weapon while driving out the fucking window. Right? Yeah. Um... Oh, yeah. Nick to the Border Patrol is good enough. <clears throat> he's, um, he's, he's, um, you know, he's on paid vacation. In case anybody's wondering what, what was going on with that officer. Uh, <clears throat> and then the, um, Current and former DEA agents charged with bribery. Oh, um, DEA agent John Costanzo Jr. and former DEA agent Manuel Recio. Um, somebody was on the cartel payroll. Somebody was on the cartel payroll, it seems like. Um, they were feeding information and they were taking bribes and they were passing off information about potential raids and stuff like that. 
Um, they're being charged and being drugged through the fucking process, but we're still seeing what's what. But uh, Costanzo Jr. was a spe DEA special agent assigned to DEA headquarters and was group supervisor in the DEA's Miami field office. Recio was a former DEA special agent who retired as special agent, uh, special agent, uh, uh, assistant special agent in charge for the Miami field office as well. Um, Recio retired and started his own pri private investigative services, um, providing um, criminal defense attorneys. Um, services. Yeah, he was bribing Cost uh, Costanzo Jr. for raid information for his client uh, for his clients. And so when there was going to be a DEA, a DEA raid on some shit and they were one of his clients, he'd fucking get the word for Costanzo and fucking Recio would pass it off to the fucking cartel or whoever, uh, whoever he was working for. So, yeah, DEA dealing with some shit. <clears throat> uh, the gun road rage combo is starting to pop off and it's literally like watching couch cowboys in their steel horses. Danny's cops need to quit watching the shitty action movies. Uh, we're more like the wild west now. We're in the 1800s of the law having constant shootouts. Wouldn't it be terrible if all the drugs were decriminalized and these D agents would be out of two jobs. Um, fucking. So to wrap up Popo's bizarre adventures, here's a story you may have heard about. Um, <clears throat> Texas, Texas, we're, we're, we're going to wrap up in Texas and specifically we're going to wrap up in Dallas. Um, more specifically, we're going to wrap up at the Mavericks basketball game in Dallas last month, uh, following a 15 year old girl who went to use the restroom. Um, some of you probably know this story. Just, you know, slow roll. So basically, the girl went to the restroom and <laughs> the girl went to the restroom and she disappeared. She, I mean, poof, she disappeared. So the girl's parents, concerned for her, contacted security at the American Airlines uh, cent uh, Center Arena where the daughter went missing. The parents repeatedly contacted Dallas police to find the girl. The poli Dallas police, quote, never began an investigation and failed to make any effort to locate the teenage girl, nor even bothered to obtain a, for a photograph of her. The Dallas police spokesman, of course, has uh, stated that... that uh, an officer at the arena searched for the teen there where the father reported her missing, but ju uh, fa Texas Family Code dictates that missing juveniles are considered runaways unless there are circumstances which appear as involuntary, such as kidnapping or abduction. The case was filed in the suburbs where the teen lives some 30 minutes from the stadium. Information included in the local po uh, police bulletin. The daughter went missing in the city of Dallas. It's a Dallas case. They refused to open a case for her. They literally failed the victim at multiple levels and stages. Now, what happened? Well, <clears throat> After the Texas Counter Tra uh, Counter Trafficking Initiative, a private coalition of citizens got a hold of photos of her. They found that they knew where she was, and they alerted the Oklahoma City City Police. And in fact, six women and two men have been arrested for sex sex trafficking abduction. Um, of said 15 year old girl 10 days uh, in uh, 10 days later in an Oklahoma City hotel 200 miles away from where the incident occurred all thanks to the the counter trafficking initiative which has no official capacity whatsoever they contacted the parents when they found nude photos of their daughter on a website known for prostitution so it was open source intelligence that found this girl's location, found that she had in fact been trafficked, found, uh, found the people responsible, and alerted the Oklahoma City, City Police what was going on. And then the Oklahoma City Police actually did something about it. The, the uh, Dallas 
uh, police, on the other hand, still maintain that they did nothing wrong. They did everything right according to their regulations, despite the fact that a 15-year-old girl went missing in fucking full view of the public at a fucking basketball game in the in a large fucking commercial center and immediately was sex trafficked. They didn't do shit. So, yes. So, you know. I can't help but recommend never, never, never go to Texas. It's a shithole. It's dangerous. It's a shithole. Either way, Popo's Bizarre Adventures, everyone. Oh, another week. Another week of police malfeasances. Jesus Christ, there's my cursor. I think I need a drink also and a cab. Rogan conned a bunch of comics to move out there and they have nothing, uh, not even shows to do. That yeah, makes sense. Rogan's a piece of garbage. Uh, I know my godsons are there and I've been trying to get them back to Oregon. Hate them being in Texas. Fucking every week, Florida and Texas, every single week. Yes. Every week, Florida and Texas, Florida and Texas, Florida and Texas, Florida and Texas. Also, San Jose. To be fair, San Jose is definitely an up and comer, right? Like it, San Jose can't fuck up, put up the numbers and the fucking just awfulness of Florida and Texas. Florida and Texas are definitely like you know, um, I don't know, like uh, the New England Patriots and the Dallas Cowboys, right? Like that's that's sort of you know Texas and Florida. They're, they're, they're the two top teams as far as police malfeasances go. Um, but yeah, San Jose definitely is, you know, trying to, San Jose's trying to hold their own. You know, San Jose is doing their thing. They're bringing their own panache, they're bringing their own style to it. San Jose is the gift that keeps giving. They are. They are. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I spent a week in the Dallas area back in 20, uh, 2009. Really skeevy vibe. No offense to anyone who lives there, but my spidey senses were hot all the time I was there, even though I was staying at a really bougie area. Plano. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I feel Florida and Texas are just worse at hiding their malignancy. Um... We have a thing here called the weekly shit town list. It sounds like you guys need a weekly shit state list. Um, Sonia, if we did a weekly shit state list, it would just be fucking the southern states plus Florida. That's it. It would just be like, and this week's shit state list is again, Texas, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, South Carolina, K Kentucky, Alabama. Fucking, we're going to have to fucking New Jersey's in there too because New Jersey fucking just absolutely fucks with black people all the time. PR and Guam trade for Florida and Texas. Same flag. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't forget Kansas. <laughs> um, Florida's full on authoritarian and fascism right now. To Hitler is getting more Nazi every day, dude. That fucking law he passed into, um, he signed in uh, that bill he signed into law. Um, that um, that um, social justice is now banned as a topic from schools from education in in Florida. Social justice. So suffrage, the suffrage movement is out. Uh, Martin Luther King, civil rights, all of, all of civil rights. Um, I mean, just anything involving indigenous, but, but I mean, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, you just signed a fucking bill banning social justice from being taught in schools. I was like, that's, 
Like, isn't that basically everything? They want a repeat of history? Yeah. Uh, no taxation without representation is social justice, since the revolution is out. Um... A week ago, the word trash was banned from stream titles, but I was able to use it last stream. I, uh, uh, um, uh, fucking Carpe, I just tried to use it for Twitch's trash, and you can't. Hold on, let me just try trash. Holy shit. Hang on, hang on. I can use Twitch. I can use Twitch is. I can use trash. But if I put Twitch is trash, I get flagged as conflict with Twitch's moderation pol uh, um, policy. Twitch is starting to, uh, Twitch is filtering for d fucking insulting them. Is trash is fine, Carpe. Is trash works as well. It's Twitch is trash that flags it. Uh, Twitch is a garbage fire still works though. Twitch is a dumpster fire still works as well. And uh, Twitch is in or yeah, <coughs> Orwellian dumpster fire. There we go. Twitch is an Orwellian dumpster fire. F uh, flies just fine. Oh, yeah. You know what? Hang on. Let me try that. Hashtag Twitch is trash. That gets by it. That gets by it. Tech support. That gets by it. Twi hashtag Twitch is trash gets by the filter. Uh, car accident, shit automatically gets pulled. Last stream I said Twitch takes out the trash and it worked great. Uh, sudden convulsive movements are trash. I mean, do we need a reason? I think I have to pull that. Um... Jeff Bezos is trash. Ooh, you know what? That's worth trying. Oh, for fuck's sake. There. And let's try. Jeff Bezos is trash works. Jeff Bezos is trash works, but holy shit. That's hilarious. If you try and if you try and insult Twitch in fucking in stream title, it gets filtered. That's some bullshit. <laughs> Jeff Bezos couldn't keep his wife happy. Oh no, I'm think I think he made her very very happy. <laughs> uh... No, Jeff Bezos didn't. That's true. Jeff Bezos didn't know he owned Twitch. Um, and can we, can we fucking, can we call her Mackenzie or Ms. Scott or something? Um, fucking rather than just like, um, Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, her name is Mackenzie Scott. Um, and she's given away like 12% of that money already within like a, the first year. She a, 
Yeah, she a badass baller bitch. I like her. Anything that Jeff Bezos fights against, she gives money to, basically. Anything he contributes to that fucking... I saw, Gemma. I saw. Um... Yeah, um, yeah, anything she, he, he, like, actively fights against, she contributes to. Yeah, I love, I love Mackenzie. She's fucking hilarious. Yeah, rather than Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, her name is Mackenzie Scott, and she's a person unto herself. <laughs> uh... I watched a thing on, um... Anne Boleyn and uh, the woman who was talking about was an expert on the Tudors and the, she was going through different iterations and um, examples of portrayals of like Anne Boleyn and the Tudors and Henry and the various, you know, the, the various uh, iterations of it within popular media. And she continually was complaining about how this portrayal of Anne Boleyn is somebody who was like a temptress that she would like reel Henry in and then hold him off at a distance. And that she would do this. Like there's even the, the, the brother that's the rumor that she slept with. She potentially had an affair with her brother to try and provide a fucking the, this, this historian. She's, she's, she's like, you know, it'd be great is if we could leave this behind, seeing as there's no contemporary evidence whatsoever for this. Yet every single Hollywood portrayal seems to portray Anne Boleyn as this temptress who just refuses to give uh, Henry what he wants, all the way up to including giving it to her brother. She's like, could we just not with that anymore? And it's just, you know, yeah, like, her, the the palpable frustration this woman felt with this just bullshit retelling of this his, of this historical story from this like dominantly male perspective that it's like yeah could we just not with that <laughs> and so she was just she's like handing out historical accuracy scores for this shit she's like yeah um like the other Boleyn girl or something the other Boleyn woman. Uh, whatever that fucking show is called. She's like, yeah, you can, you can have a two and fuck off. <laughs> I was like, I like her. <laughs> she, she fucking tells it like it is. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting, like I said, the weekend was, it was documentary weekend for me. I watched a lot of documentaries over the weekend. Um, goddamn tutors. Uh, history can only handle a few powerful women. They need to undermine the rest. I mean, basically, yeah. Uh, let's see. Delete that. Okay. Uh, let's see. I watched the last season of The Last Kingdom. It was good. Yeah. I don't watch any of these fucking shows. It was also... Oh, Jesus Christ. Dang. I didn't know they put fucking mariachi bands in their warehouses on Cinco de Mayo. That would annoy the fuck out of me, even if I was into that music. I'd be like, can you not... Jesus. Oh yeah, I um actually saw this. Um I have this somewhere. Um yes, the church is it, it's they didn't lose uh, that's okay. So it's sort of a fucked up. It, it's it's a fucked up telling, Zippy. It's a fucked up telling. So yes, the the church in fact uh, does not have uh, um, tax exempt status anymore, and it was probably uh, facilitated by the fact that there are IRS complaints against the church, but. It's seemingly that the church actually um, voluntarily surrendered their um, tax exempt status. So, yes. But yes, the the um. There we go. It is the, let's see, um, Greg Locke, 
Mount Juliet's Global Vision Bible Church violated the Johnson Amendment. Yeah, it's Greg Locke. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right, Rev. Um, if you vote Democrat, I don't want you around this church. You can get out, you baby butchering election thief. Uh, you cannot be Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. I don't care how mad that makes you. You can get as pissed off as you want. You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. In the same sermon, he insulted blah, blah, blah. He insulted Joe Biden, blah, blah, blah. Witchcraft, blah, blah, blah. Fucking democracy, blah, blah, blah. Fucking, you know. Um, so, yeah, he um, he got... Um, he, he got, uh, like, attacked, but... There, somebody pointed me to a speech of his, um, a sermon of his from like a couple weeks ago in which he says that the church has, uh, has, um, like conceded its, uh, its, uh, tax exempt status. So I don't know whether it was pulled, whether it was bound to be pulled and he did, uh, well, I quit anyway. You can't fire me. I quit. Um, or whether they just pulled it preemptively. I can't speak to any of that. But what I can speak to is that, yeah, um, Greg Locke violated the Johnson Amendment, which uh, um, says that he's not allowed to be like that kind of political, to engage in political activity at that level. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, we don't we don't know at this point. Um, but the church is not listed on the tax exempt registry for the IRS. So one way or another. Church isn't a tax exempt entity for him any longer. I mean, what did fucking what did the fuck fa fuck face Bill Maher say now? All I know is that he's probably misrepresenting his reasons. I mean, you know, yes. Um also also, um, Raven Software, their subsidiary of uh, Activision Blizzard, uh, Raven Software won their union election. Um, so, what's up himself? So, yeah, Raven Software, a subsidiary of Activision Blizzard, is unionized. Uh, what did Bill, uh, transphobic stuff? What else? Um, oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Got it. Got it. Literally missing the forest for the trees. Mar said it's weird. Cali makes more trans kids than Ohio. I mean, okay, one, Ohio's like nothing. Ohio doesn't matter. It's like three feet worth of fucking bullshit nothingness. Whereas California is the world's like sixth or seventh largest, maybe even fifth, depending on what month it is, largest economy, right? With way more people, right? Like it's it just, yeah, like it's just fucking, I mean, he's ignoring so much demographical data and as well as, you know, hey, like, yeah, when never mind the fact that when you let people come out, more people come out. But hey, whatever, you know. Okay, Bill. Okay, Bill. Sure, 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 sure. Did you see that monkeypox crypto? I posted to Twitter and what the fuck. I saw the what the fuck for it, but I didn't like. I didn't even like read it. Read it. I got distracted by the fucking Chinese VTuber who got human trafficked for half a year. That I see, I was in there and I was like, what the fuck? I I just you know okay yeah. There's a monkeypox coin tanked minus ninety nine percent after devs got away with. Over 400 million in an exit in an exit scam. Jesus Christ! God damn it! These fucking crypto bros are 
functionally fucking deficient. He says literally that it can't be them being bullied. It's more likely training. He says everything but grooming. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Maher's been a problem for a minute. Um, you know, Vivo, I don't specifically know the answer to that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Bill, it probably is cultural. As in, you feel safer when your culture isn't trying to drag you behind a truck. Oh, uh, fucking A. God, yeah, Bill Maher has been a problem for a minute. And it's just, it is what it is. Um, so we have shipping problems. We have logistics problems in this country, right? Over 10,000 truck drivers have been taken off the road this year due to um, marijuana violations. That's a real thing. The American Trucking Association reported that the driver shortage has risen, risen to an all-time high. But as of April 1st, 2022... 10,276 commercial vehicle drivers tested positive for cannabis use. Um, so they, I mean, yeah. Like they get pulled whether they're actively, uh, whether they're actively under it or not. You are the biggest loser in the world. You know what? I kind of want to, um, um, Is it, is it this? Uh. I think it was that. I'm going to unban it. All right. Um, yeah, I can't actually, I actually can't answer that for you. I'll have to look into it. Um, so yeah, like that, um, they, they also, um, <laughs> they don't return. Um, 72% of them don't re return. So like at this point, marijuana violations, cannabis use violations are costing us like actual logistics. No, no, not not the guy in the seventh. That's that's Newman Leary. Newman Leary is just a straight Nazi. I don't even remember what that dude's fucking deal was. He's just an idiot who doesn't know anything. Um, in Montreal, which is a speed bump of potholes all over. So when I see Will Ryder sports cars, I just love to do it. Um, it, no, 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 no. These aren't charges, Wordy. These are violations. These aren't charges. Okay, this is your company finding out that you smoke weed. It's a big fucking world of difference. Yeah, this this isn't court cases. This is drug testing by a third party private entity and then they fire them. So, yeah. Corporations own your PE, they do. Oh, hey, that's a new thing. Cool. This is trucking companies shooting themselves in the foot for weed. Yes, very much so. Ah, oh. that's Florida social justice. Hey, looks like they shit can Newman Leary's seventh account. Fuck is AEW. Um, oh yeah. Y'all see the, uh, the Pilsen bookstore. I'm going to, I'm going to see if they have any like online stuff. Um, cause if I can buy, I'm gonna, I'm the 
Pilsen Bookstore in Chicago. Uh, it's Pilsen Community Books, P I L S E N. Um, it's a cop free zone. They they are a police free store. <clears throat> a police officer who claims she said as a gay Mexican American woman and a member of the community I'm shocked and heartbroken Chicago Chicago that's, that's where yeah um, they're, they're a police free zone. It's that simple. Fucking, um, we know that we keep us safe and that our community is the folks that come through our doors every day. Young organizers looking for their first Franz fin, uh, fin and book, teachers buying books with their own money for their classroom, parents hoping to expose their children to books that will help them imagine and create a better world. These people are our community and these people are always welcome. In the interest of fostering a safe space for all those people whenever possible, we aim to keep Pilsen Community Books a police-free store. Um, the bookstore, uh, carries always carry a book merchandise. Um, we get you a picture of like some of their, Uh, well, Lada, we, we private en entities reserve the right to refuse service to anyone in the U.S., including police officers. Police officers are not a protected class. Just like trans people aren't a protected class in many instances. It's the same thing. So you can absolutely deny service to a police officer. 100%. It is, it is not an immutable characteristic, uh, characteristic, and it is not recognized at any level of uh, legality. Yeah, wait for Chicago to make police a protected car. That, that's, the, that's the other iteration that you can do. But at this time and place, it is not a protected class. Nice, Fuzzy. I don't teach guitar lessons to cops, kids. Yep, it is... <clears throat> So at this time, you 100%, it is 100% legal for you to um, refuse service to any police officers or their family or any of that sort of thing. Yeah. That's just the way it goes. The same way that uh, a, a cake shop doesn't have to bake a cake for a gay person. A bookstore doesn't have to sell a book to a cop. Welcome to America, where private a private business is... Um, Cops need not apply. Oh, let's see. Race, religious belief, national origin, age 40 years and up, by the way. Um, wither, wither, wither. Who's actually considered a protected class? Um, so if you are age, anybody over the age of 40 and up, that's a protected class. Under the age of 40, you're not a protected class. Yeah, welcome to America. So race, religion, national origin, age as long as you're 40 years and up, sex. Um, by the way, sex is uh, has been interpreted to include discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity, but that is always up in the air. It depends sometimes. Pregnancy, citizenship, familial status, disability status, veteran status, or genetic information. These are the uh, protected classes uh, within uh, U.S. like legal structure. Um, so, whether there's no guarantee based on state, based on current iteration, and who's doing it. 
easier, easier way to default? Probably not. Probably not, but it could be. But here's, here's the long and short of it. Um, no, Gemma. I mean, Title IX is a whole fucking thing. Um, but no, this isn't Title IX. This is all based, the protected classes are based off like the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the um, Age Discrimination and Employment Act of 75, the Equal Pay Act of whenever, I forget, 60 something. Um, and Pregnancy Discrimination Act, uh, fucking Rehabilitation Act, Veterans Era Readjustment, fucking uh, Readjustment Assistance Act, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, like, d d d no, none of this is Title IX. Yeah, that's the the Title Nine is Title Nine is a subset of the Education Amendment of nineteen seventy something, nineteen seventy something. <laughs> Title Nine is nineteen seventies. Um, it was an amendment to the Higher Education Act of sixty five. Um, and so yeah, it, that's 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 Title Nine. That's a whole other ball game. Um, and that's just um, that's sex based discrimination within educational groups. Fucking A, we're we're a mess. But anyway. No, they aren't actually. Most cops aren't ex military. No. Um, there's quite seventy two, says Beast. Thank you. Uh, I thought I'd let you know my 10-month-old baby woke up from what I think was a nightmare. She was just hysterically crying. I literally brought her to my office and put my computer on Twitch because she's always been fascinated by the computer. Put your stream on. She started to smile and laugh. She either likes you or thinks you look funny, but seriously, it was adorable. Aw, facts. Something goo goo ga 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 ga. Fucking either way. Facts. Happy I could happy I could be of assistance. Just another service I provide here at Proudly Radical. Um... Fucking and uh, dusk, uh, dusk, dusk G. Um, no, in fact, uh, the vast majority of police officers are not ex-military. Yeah. Oh, fucking a. <laughs> She's a future anarchist, Emma Goldman. Um, 18%. 18% according to the last Census Bureau. So there's there's your number. Uh, vast majority of police officers are chuds that got C's in high school. They didn't even get C's. They didn't even get C's and you know it. Ah, <sighs> they are. There are many of them are military LARPers for sure, for sure. When I was a kid, my brain dead cousin wanted to be a cop all his life. The fact he didn't get it makes me wonder if he was too good. Um. Ah, Hakeem. Hakeem Bay, Hakeem fucking Bay, fucking whatever his douchebag name, Peter Wilson. Oh, Hakeem Bay was um, he was an anarchistic author who was primarily known for um, the the uh, developing the concept of temporary autonomous zones. His real name was uh, Peter Wilson. Um, though he used the, the non de plume of um, Hakeem Bay. Um, he was he was a kid toucher. <clears throat> he was a kid toucher. Hakeem Bay was a fucking absolute <laughs> Yeah. No, he's black. In fact. No, no, wait. Sorry, white. Hakeem's white, right? I always forget. I always forget. I'm sorry, I don't see race. Um.
He's he's white. I love that fucking Kvass is putting it in quotes. He's he's white. He's. So, yeah. Either way, fuck him. He's dead. <laughs> Either way, he's dead. Good rins. Good rins. I mean, the temporary autonomous zone is a worthwhile uh, concept. Give me a name. It is. It's a worthwhile concept. Just, just remember, you fucking distance yourself. Yeah, thanks for the ideas. Now fuck off, Kid Diddler. Yeah, 100%. Like, just take the good idea and fucking kick him to the curb. Like, you know what? That's a good idea. Now get the fuck out of here, you piece of shit. We should, we should just deny he ever even created it. We should just assign it to somebody else. Give it to Emma Goldman or something. Just fucking be like, yeah, Emma Goldman created the idea of temporary autonomous zones back in the day. Really? Yeah. Just fucking who cares? Just retcon that shit. Just be like, fuck it. He's a piece of shit. Take his idea and kick him to the curb. And he was into mysticism. Of course he was. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? It's about the idea, not the man. Man's a piece of garbage. Throw him in the trash. Bay is a lord title and Hakeem is a judge, doctor, or scholar, but since when is a lord something in Anarchy season such Jesus Christ, so it is like that. Q marks is to call anarchist kid diddlers. Oh, if they, if they want to go down that road, they got way more kitty diddlers than we do. I mean, right at, right all the way to the top of them. Right at the top of them. Fucking Stalin himself banging 14 year olds and shit like that. So Uh, that one. <laughs> I heard he sold the whole concept from some indigenous peoples. <clears throat> oh, so we covered the Southern Baptist sexual abuse and the Catholic abuse at the top of the fucking show. Um... Jesus. Monkeypox likely spread by sex at two separate raves in Europe. All right, Europe. Look, do we need to have a fucking talk? Like, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Right? I get it. I get it. But can we just not for a minute? That'd be great. It just it'd be, it'd be great. If we could just not create some like monkey COVID pox, some shit. Like, <laughs> yes, exactly. Fire. Time to shut down the glory holes until we figure this shit out. Like, come on, man. Fucking and beats. I mean, wear a wrap and don't fuck if you've got open sores. Like, fuck it. We're going to put some like monkey COVID pox or some shit like that. COVID pox. Like, Jesus Christ. Can we just not? Fucking A. Uh, they already tried to blame it on the BDSM community fact. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> don't you touch our glory holes. Interesting, Gemma. Have to keep an eye out for that one. One more ingredient to this cocktail. Maybe I'll get my zombies. Uh... What have Yaga's demons conjured now? Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Did you did you guys see the fucking con the, the, the Republican reaction to the, the domestic terrorist bill? 
that they tried to get past. Dude, it fucking... <laughs> it was... It was... Let's just say it was interesting. <laughs> it was telling. It was... Carpe... Uh, not carpe, sorry. Car accident telling. Right simultaneously. Fucking it, it, car accident puts it in. I'm, I'm saying it. Yeah, dude, it was, it was telling. It was telling, dude. They a hundred percent. But like, you're talking about us. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we are. Um, a lot of at least people talk about Europe again. We miss the days when we did the colony stuff and be the talk of the town. Oh, poor in Europe. Um, it was wild, but the best is Laura Ingram measles vaccine confusion video. Oh, I think I remember that one. Oh, you, you, no, Zippy, dude, they, they fucking lost their fucking minds over it. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the, the GOP and, like, the right-wing conservative media, media sphere said that um, any bill that specifically mentions white supremacy is, is targeting conservatives. <laughs> and people are like, I mean, homie. <laughs> the Spider-Man mirror meme, basically. Same thing happened with the Facebook hate speech detector algorithm. Yes, yes. I remember that the, the, the Facebook had to turn off the hate speech algorithm because it fucking basically filtered all conservatives. <laughs> Self-report. Yeah. Damn, I mean. They're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly, basic dude. You're not supposed to say that in public. Dude, Tucker Carlson is saying that shit on his fucking channel. Of course, Tucker Carlson is a fucking, you know. He, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> just, it flagged the Constitution. I mean, that is some racist ass shit. Constitution's full of racist ass shit. For fuck's sake. I don't know for sure. Ah. Uh, somewhat yes, somewhat no, Glazy. If you feel that way, it's a sign of you getting older, by the way. It is. James Madison gets banned from Twitter post um, posthumously, posthumously. Um, oh God, y'all see the Russia ban, right? Oh my God, that was fucking hilarious. Russia banned 963 Americans, right, including Biden and Harris. They didn't ban. They didn't ban Trump, of course. But did you see who else they banned? I was laughing my fucking ass off. Like, Russia is, like, literally just incompetent at this point. You know that, right? Like, they're just incompetent. There's there's no way around it. Uh, it was the declaration. Hmm, fair enough. Um, I'm just waiting to see if any of you... Uh, from uh, uh, Gemma from Ever Visiting. McCain, there we go. Fact got there eventually. They ban they banned John McCain. They ban they banned John McCain. They banned a dead dude. Yes. They banned a dead dude. They're like you fucking that guy can't f <laughs> Yes, Morgan Freeman also got banned because Morgan Freeman criticized Russia like in 2017. Yes, but Morgan Freeman legitimately could visit Russia. John McCain, on the other hand, sort of a different deal entirely. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't think John McCain will be visiting Russia anytime soon. I don't think he'll be visiting much of anything anytime soon. That sort of happens when you're dead. Um, Russia is legitimately the most incompetent fucking nation state on the... Uh, <laughs> he could travel to Russia in a box. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. A small box. What if he comes back to life? Then we have bigger problems. Fuck it. I, I just... Oh, God. Do I have... All right, hang on. There we go. Is this is... Right, come on, load. It's a Russian website, so my system may filter a lot of shit. Here's the updated list. Oh, boo. So I'll blink and go by. It's just no Trump. There's Biden. There we go. Kamala. Yep. Um, No, Bernie isn't on the list. No, Bernie's not on the list. This list just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. All right, so let's see what Morgan Freeman got tagged for. I know he said some shit, and they've got a fucking description here. So let's... A well-known film actor who in September 27 recorded a video message accusing Russia of conspiring against the United States and calling for a fight against our country. So I want to look at Okay, so I want to look up the 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 political justice, uh, I'm sorry, the social justice rules for um for this um fucking Florida banning social justice from from its K through 12 uh textbooks. So I want to know what it Okay, so the new rules don't actually define social justice. Here, but they, they include three prohibited ideas, like, cl categories. Pot potential social, social justice components include seeking to eliminate undeserved disadvantages for selected groups, 
Undeserved disadvantages are from mere chance of birth and are factors beyond anyone's control, thereby landing different groups in different conditions. A quality of treatment under the law is not a sufficient condition to achieve justice. So, under this definition of social justice, Florida textbooks can't explain, I suppose, or even acknowledge, right? Like, you can't even, you can't even talk about um, why some people in society get better treatment than others. I mean, the, the scope is so open that... Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, latte, of course. I mean, for sure, latte. No, I mean, theoretically, no, Wordy. You can't, no. That's that's foreboding as well under, under the Florida stuff. No, exactly, Lottie. You can't have that either. Like, I mean, the, the, the founding, the revolution of this country, the founding of this country is social justice. You can't even, this is seeking to eliminate undeserved disadvantages for selected groups. We were being underrepresented, uh, um, underrepresented, uh, and overly taxed. We would have been, the Americans would have been the select group who was undeserved had undeserved uh disadvantages placed upon them and we sought to eliminate them like literally the the declaration of independence is by this definition a social justice document and is forbidden from being taught in florida schools nice car accident How do you explain the making of America with this? We grew here like flowers anyway. Pop quiz. I mean, Gemma, they've eliminated human history from the curriculum. Forget American history. They've eliminated. You can't talk about the signing of the Magna Carta. You can't talk about the Peasants' Revolt. You can't talk about uh, India and um, Mahatma Gandhi. You can't talk about like, theoretically, you wouldn't be able to even talk about any of the world wars. You wouldn't be able to talk about... You can't talk about anything. Like, they've just eliminated human history. I... You have to literally teach what no letters are, uh, are and numbers are. That's it. George Washington is out. Lincoln is definitely out. Yeah. <clears throat> we, oh, yeah. The Bible be out, Aspen, for sure. Natural history is already optional. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're Indo. Fucking. Uh, either way. Um... Yeah. Yeah, it is. You're right. I mean, it is fascism 101. Direct control of history. Direct control of the narrative. Hey, has fuck union organizing. Good on you, has. Hmm. Y'all see the uh, police department who, uh, I didn't fucking include this. It's just funny. The police department um, in Pennsylvania who posted a drug bust uh, photo and removed the photo quickly after somebody pointed out one of their officers was stoned as fuck in the picture. Uh, <laughs> hey, I mean, he's stoned. Like, that kind of stoned. Like, Fucking dude just lit. Yeah. Um, legacy Americans. Uh, 
had to make sure it was a genuine article. Yeah. Um, they pulled the post. They tried to delete it. Everybody already got a copy. It's fucking hilarious. Um, have you heard the, the term that uh, the new term that Tucker Carlson and his ilk are using now? Legacy Americans. Jesus fucking Christ. Legacy Americans. I'm going to fucking legacy my ass. I'm going to legacy my leg up your ass. That's my fucking Jesus. Goddamn Christ. These people are fucking ridiculous. Uh, oh, load that. Won't you send me with her? Oh, jeez. Um. Yeah. Legacy Americans would be indigenous people, technically. Well, they don't count because they're not Americans, right? Like, that's, that's the fucking... That's the shtick. That's the shtick. Is they're not Americans... Because America came after them. They didn't create America. We created America. We're the legacy Americans. They're something, some, I don't know. What would they go with? Legacy? Um, what, 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 I don't know. Either way, I can see the thought process. They're like, they don't count because they predate it. The Floridian education system is going to end up being much like the one here in Louisiana where everyone goes to private school just to get a decent education. Parents take out second mortgages and send the kids to private high school. Jesus Christ. Boomers trying to rebrand. Oh, my, my bad, right? They aren't people to them. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's like... Like when I, I just say Mexicans, right? It's like, you know... You all know I'm using it in the, like, fucking Fox News term sometimes. Like, I'll be like, you know, Mexicans. They don't... You think they know about Guatemalans or Ecuadorians or Peruvians or Colombians or Chileans or Argentinians or Uruguayans, right? Like, you know, fucking <laughs> Surinamese, right? Like, this is not... This is not... This is not something that is within their their scope of discourse, right? That's just That's just Mexicans. That's all that is. Exactly. Fucking. <laughs> they don't even know about El Salvador. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say I end it. Only if they're trying to become socialist. Ah, Fox News barely knows they exist. Um, I kind of want to. Does anybody have. Does anybody have somebody new? God damn. Show less. Um, no, Rev. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the season, we had a blast asking all the migrant workers where they're from. It was super cool. Nice, Aspen. Um, had a neighbor ask if I if I only speak Mexican once. Jesus Christ. <laughs> how, why, how, how are you not familiar? Uh, what, what led to this revelation, Wordy? Because, I mean, in this part of the world, we're more than familiar with Baja California. Like, that's not, it's not a complex topic for us. It's just par for the, par for the course. Grinson, thank you for the follow. Um, but I mean, congratulations on learning about Baja, I suppose. But at the end of the day, you know, yeah, it's a gorgeous place. You know, as long as you avoid all the fucking douchebag trust fund kids. Do we know anything about them winner? Fuck's sake. Not a period. Yeah. You've been wanting to go uh, off roading in the Baja Peninsula for so long, right? Um, how do we feel about um, Arunin now? 
a runner now, area now, fucking Aruna now, Arunin, Arunin now. What are they? Either way, the Indian dude. How do we feel about him? Dude, I'm very hesitant for Indian politics just because, dude, there's a lot of fucking Hindu nationalists. It's a lot of fucking Hindu nationalists. Yeah, this guy. How do we feel about him? <laughs> do they have a dozen people screaming on stream? Uh, fucking right now. Yeah, I know, right? Like those, um, the sort of uh, Indian um, talk shows. I apologize. He's Tamil. Well, I've, 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 <laughs> I've had interactions with one uh, uh, Tamil individual before. The, oh God, what was that? Uh, who is the fucking Canadian dude? Um, T dot, T dot. That's it. T dot. Fucking T dot. Yeah, who who threatened to go to Tennessee and buy a gun and then come out to Las Vegas and shoot me? That guy? Yeah, the dude who was <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only uh Tamil dude I've had interactions with. Um, all right, let me check this guy. Like his Indian politics is a, like a, okay, that dude's not broadcasting. I don't know why. live oh look who's live oh I just doing some cuckoo nuts live with one person um has he shot you yet not that I'm aware of. Oh, I'm glad people fucking seen through this idiot. Um, all right. Hmm. There's, oh, there's that and that and that fucking, I don't know. Yeah, fuck it. I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. Done. 
Uh, I don't know. I don't know which one, of course. Um. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do some stuff. I'm gonna do some stuff. Let's see if I can't get a proper set of workouts in. Um. So we're gonna raid over to squidding, and hey, yeah, you're welcome, Gemma. Pine Bluff is nicknamed uh, Crime Bluff after all. Um. Yeah, tomorrow's the nighttime show. I need to get more weed. I need to, I need to get more weed. Um, but yeah. Ah, uh. oh, you welcome, Aspen. Welcome everybody. <laughs> hey guys, I like weed. Mm, come on by, car accident. Come on by. Either way, yeah, we're gonna raid over to Squiddy. You all know who he is. Is he? Is Squiddy he? I think Squiddy's he. Um, either way, we'll see what he uh, what he's up to. 